College World Series, which means it could all end tonight. Right there at TD Ameritrade Park, the maize in blue, Michigan has been on hand and loud all series long. And it's the Michigan Wolverines who are one win away from a College World Series championship. Be the first since 1962. Standing in the way, the powerhouse. Vanderbilt hasn't been long since they've tasted the championship. Welcome everyone to Omaha, Nebraska, and this is night one of the College World Series Finals. We got knocked back on our heels early. They were the aggressor, there's no doubt about that. RBI for Brewer. What a start for the Wolverines. Vanderbilt's made a little game here. That's a home run off the bat of J.J. Bleday, 27th of the year. I think the difference was certainly Tommy Henry. Henry shows a little emotion. We did have some big plays, a huge hit. A two-run home run by Jimmy Kerr. And it is gone! Jimmy Kerr goes deep again to third base, and out is Martin. That was a seed from right. Michigan makes the statement in game one. And are now one win away from a College World Series championship. It's one team playing better than the other. I, I don't give a crap where they came from. They've celebrated each day of the postseason like it's been a gift. It's going to be a new ball game. It's going to be a different personality that game, and we're just going to keep doing what we've been doing all year. We're here for a reason. We put in the work to get here. Our team is capable of winning everything. presented by Capital One. If the school's basketball coach is a good luck charm, well, Juwan Howard has been replaced by Jerry Stackhouser Vanderbilt. Our College World Series final storylines. Not since 62 is Michigan won at all. They were good in the 80s, but never won a title since 62. Vanderbilt did win in 14. They've been in the finals in 15. Now again in 19, they're knocking on the door. The Buckeyes, the last Big Ten team to win it. And the relationship between Eric Backage and Tim Corbin goes back to Clemson 2002. Then they both bolted for Vanderbilt with Corbin, the head man, taking Backage along with him. And they built a dynamite program. Chris Budden will join us shortly. I'm Carl Ravitch, Eduardo Perez, Kyle Peterson as well. Michigan did everything right last night. In fact, Michigan's been doing everything right for a long time. No team can feel as good as they do coming into this game tonight. How optimistic are they, would you say? Very optimistic. When you're 4-0 and what you've been able to do in this College World Series is pitch well the first two games and then let the offense take over in the next two and take the pressure away from the pitching staff. This is what the Michigan Wolverine offense has done early in games. They've scored. They've scored it well and they continue to apply that energy. That same energy that they use with the music inside that clubhouse, they've taken that beat right into that first inning and they continued it for nine straight innings. This is a dangerous team, a dangerous team that can play really good defense One too. One of the last four teams to get into this field. The Friday where all teams are on this field warming up, they were the loosest group. They're aggressive and they have a great attitude. However, the baseball conundrum for any team that's riding high is the guy that's on the mound. And for Vanderbilt, they could not have asked for a better guy to try to make sure this doesn't end tonight. No, if you want to turn the page, you want to turn the ball over to Kumar Rocker based on what he's done recently. He's just a freshman, but he has not looked apart over the last 10 starts. And in probably the biggest game of the year for Vanderbilt, Rocker threw as good as you could possibly throw and did something that had not been done in Vanderbilt history. They lose game one to Duke in the Super Regional. Rocker punches out 19 in game two, goes CG, throws a no-hitter. That keeps the Super alive, and Vanderbilt will ultimately advance to this point. Similar situation today now. In an elimination game because of the game one loss, and you got to be comfortable with Rocker being out there just based on what you've seen before. He is turning into an ace before our sure is. 9-1, his last 10, 4-0 in the postseason with an ERA of 1. Will great pitching slow down great hitting at the College World Series? This memorial, when I came, I was asked to just be a representative. Now they've become my family. My name is Nola Fritz. I am a Gold Star mother. I lost my oldest son, First Lieutenant Jacob Fritz, January 20th of 2007, he was executed um, as a POW in Iraq. What you see behind me and what I travel throughout the United States with is a memorial to those soldiers that we have lost since the global war on terror. 
My goal and the goal of patriotic productions is to bring this throughout the United States. The reason we felt it was important to be here at the College World Series is because there are so many different fans from different areas of the United States. That's what's important to us. We want these soldiers remembered. We want their stories told. And so important given the age of the people that are on this field and so many of them that are in the stands. Vanderbilt in Michigan starting a little late tonight due to some rain issues we had earlier. But now we are set for the national anthem. And for that, we send it down to our public address announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, please honor America and those who support our freedom at home and abroad by joining Patrick Mason from Annapolis, Maryland in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave statue outside td ameritrade with the likeness of brian o'connor who of course is the head coach of virginia and others who all desperately when they start this journey Try to make it to Omaha, the ultimate destination for a college baseball coach like Tim Corbin and Eric Backich, as well as the players that stand on the respective first and third baselines. One of them has a chance to win a championship tonight, the Michigan Wolverines. The other, a recent champion back in 2014, sending their ace Kumar Rocker on the mound to try to prevent that from happening. All sorts of terrific storylines surrounding both teams. We'll start with the guys that have a chance to win it tonight. And, of course, a family whose name you've become familiar with. It's the Kerr family, Chris. It is. And for the first time since 1962, Michigan has a chance to bring home a national championship in baseball. Who was on that 1962 team? John Kerr. Or as Jimmy affectionately refers to him as, Papa. See, Jimmy is a third-generation Michigan baseball player. They both dad, Derek, and Papa John both also played in Omaha. And the stuff of Papa John, the stats from the NCAA postseason back in 62, sound like an urban legend. It's just such a big appreciation to wear the Michigan jersey like my dad and grandpa did. I always knew they both played there. And then as I started to get older, maybe high school age, it was like, okay, my grandpa won a national championship there. He has the initials JDJ inscribed on his glove, on his bat. It's the initials are his grandfather John, his father Derek, and then himself. Earlier this year, like we all got a, a Michigan legend to talk about, and I got to talk about my grandpa. So we all knew about his playing career, but I think he pitched twice in the same day. Just ridiculous stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, <laughs> that is absurd. I've seen some replays on TV. I mean, my, dad, my dad's getting a lot of TV time, so it's fun to see those reactions. A third-generation Omaha appearance. I said it. I feel like a million times. It's a Hollywood script. It's just so important to me, to, you know, to be able to leave a legacy like we're doing right now, you know, in the Michigan history books. So if you haven't seen the full stats for John Kerr in that NCAA regional back in 62, he pitched two complete games, 19 innings, 313 pitches. Pretty incredible. But now Jimmy has a chance to make his own legendary status in the Michigan history books. Already three home runs since they've been here in Omaha and a chance to hoist a trophy for the first time since Papa John did it. 
That's cool. Papa John's a good story. Jimmy's a good story. And of course, Dad Derek's a good story. The story that doesn't get told very much is Derek's got another brother named John, who is a huge Michigan fan, went to Michigan, lives in Vegas. And every time he goes to see the son play here, his nephew, uh, they lose. So he has not been invited to Omaha. <laughs> He's watching on TV. Hey, John, how's it going? There's your nephew. Hope he has a good game tonight. Hope we all have a good game tonight as we get set for game two of the College World Series Finals. Vanderbilt and Michigan. First pitch coming up. We got the key to the city. We got the world in the palm of our hands. This is our moment. This is our time. This is our chance. We got the key to the city. Can't nobody do it like we can. So come on and ride. Welcome back, everyone. There is the head coach of the Vanderbilt Commodores. He built this program from scratch back in 2003. It started. Here he is 17 years later. They, of course, won it all in 14. But for Tim Corbin, this is a much bigger deal than just teaching guys how to throw and catch and field and run. There's a lot more that goes into modeling and molding these kids. You turn them from kids to men in a classroom. I remember he came in. My freshman year, and uh, I think he had like a toothbrush or something. And he was like showing us how to, you know, put the toothpaste on, and then like why it's so important to brush our teeth. You know, you want the soft bristles. He even went so far to specify like what color you want. But yeah, that that's probably the most random thing. <laughs> Secret sauce is green toothbrush, soft bristles. <laughs> you talk about curly whites. Exactly. Our Martin is looking to finish the year hitting above 400. Blade hit his 27th home run last night. Leads all of college baseball with home runs. You said it yesterday. First one in in 10 games. JJ Blade he gets hot. And remember to start off the game, it's cloudy. There are no shadows in effect right now for the hitters. So we don't have Jeff Criswell on the mound. Last night, if you watched us, he was coming in. He closed it. There was some thought maybe they don't bring him in, and he starts instead. Step, we got a freshman. So we got freshman, freshman tonight. Isaiah Page, just his fifth start of the season. He's been very good out of the bullpen, but just five starts this year. Can you get to Chriswell? And I think that's the question tonight for Michigan. They like Chriswell best in the bullpen. He is able to go today. Probably can't go more than 50 or 60 pitches. If you go Page to Chriswell, that's the, the ideal environment tonight for Michigan. Redshirt freshman out of Diamond Bar, California. Saw his numbers there. 16 earned runs, 16 walks, 20 strikeouts. He's allowed four home runs. And again, this Michigan team has got here using three pitchers. That's it. Now we see a fourth. And he sees Austin Martin, third baseman, a sophomore, six foot, 175, out of Jacksonville, Florida. All right, play. Fastball around 88 to 90. Martin, a contact hitter, freshman All American last year. And his ascent to the top of college baseball has been pretty rapid. He's behind 0 2. He likely pitched his last game in a Michigan uniform last night. And he was phenomenal. How about Isaiah Page coming in with a strikeout of Austin Martin? I think freshman, maybe we do feel comfortable in this inning. Isaiah Page, I don't know when he found out he was going to pitch, whether it was last night or whether it was today, but goes out right away, strike one, strike two, and strikes out one of the best hitters in the country in Austin Martin. 
Well, we know this. He was at least put on the clock last night to be made aware that you you could be the guy. We'll see how Chriswell feels when he wakes up. Big challenge in Martin. Bigger challenge here in J.J. Lede. As you take a look at Jeff Chriswell. That one is just hammered, but it's pulled foul. Went number four overall to the Marlins. He was the McNeese outstanding player prospect in the Cape Cod League. Of all the scouts, this was the guy they said best prospect oh. in the Cape in the summer of 18. Pretty high praise. That's that's what got him moved up the draft boards early. Is is Bladé's summer last year? Because remember his sophomore year, he was hurt for part of it, but his sophomore year he had four home runs. Power started to show up last summer, and it has not gone anywhere this year. Slider and that one was hit right at the Vanderbilt bench. Pretty silly numbers. He's reached base successfully in 96 of the last 97. And if he reaches tonight, it'll be 50 straight games that his foot has touched first and he stayed there. Two of the top three in exit velocity so far in this College World Series belong to J.J. Boudet. Hardest hit so far is 111 miles per hour. He's 6'3", 215 pounds. A leader on the field and a big-time leader off the field for this Vanderbilt team. Hey, Page doing a good job locating his pitches. He is, and that's kind of who Page is. I mean, it's it's a fastball that if, if he bumps 90 tonight, that's a big number. He's going to sit 87, 88, somewhere in there, but what he is going to do is usually pound the strike zone. Ball, it's outside. Two balls, two strikes. Check. So we had a K zone replay, and that one did miss. Joe Donovan caught it. David Savage is your home plate umpire tonight. Oh. Two terrific right fielders tonight. Jordan Brewer from Michigan, whose arm we saw last night. And this guy, Bladé, on a 3-2, popped it up. Franklin was deep. He's coming all the way in, and he makes the play. And that's a long run. It felt like he ran about 60 yards to make that play. You're going to see a lot of that tonight. A lot of fly balls. The outfield is going to get their work in. When you have this type of velocity, pitches mixing the changeup, the slider, and then fastball elevated, that's what you're going to get. Which brings up the shortstop, Ethan Paul. We had a cell, a storm cell, roll through here with some thunder and lightning, but man, has it left it quiet. Look at that flag in center. It isn't moving. This is another one that is pulled foul on a first pitch. It gets to the upper deck down the right field line. Kumar Rocker, he'll take the mound. Can't wait to see what he brings tonight. As the 0 1 comes to Paul, a little bit late on that. Ask Ethan, Ethan Paul what one of his characteristics are that you may not know about. Yeah, this is just an ideal characteristic for a shortstop, is he is a uh, pretty sick, sick juggler. Great hand eye coordination. Give him any free objects and he can make him make him sink. And you want your shortstop to be able to do that. I bet Omar Vizquel was a hell of a juggler. But you, KP, you're a pretty good juggler. That's kind of what I'm known for first. I mean, it's, <laughs> yep, it's what I lead with when I meet somebody. Top line resume. Yeah. Nice to meet you. I can really juggle. <laughs> Good chance Isaiah Page will give you three or four innings, and there's uh, 
similarity between what we're seeing some of the major league teams do with an opener. Get through the lineup two or three times, turn it over to somebody in the bullpen on the corner. And Isaiah Page delivers a very successful top half of the first. Jeff Criswell, the first one out there to congratulate him. We'll see Kumar Rocker when we come back. Package is ready, and he's uh, having fun with the cameraman. So he's comfortable. Why wouldn't you be after the Isaiah Page pitched in the top of the first? So his offense has been great. We'll take a look at our Capital One batting order for the Wolverines. Guys, the hidden secret is in the two spot, Jesse Franklin, and then following him, two men down, is Jimmy Kerr in the cleanup spot. Three home runs, eight RBI. Keep in mind, last year, the last, the last two years, two home runs and less than 200 batting uh, plate appearances. That's impressive. There's really no secret about Jimmy Kerr, and there is zero secret about this guy who burst out of the national scene with that 19 strikeout no hit effort against Duke in the Super Regionals like social media explosion Kumar Rocker's name trending all over the place it's just your average looking freshman right there <laughs> 6 4 255 mid 90s and a wipeout slider that's why Rocker's 9 to 1 in his last 10 starts with an ERA in the mid twos he's become the ace of this Vanderbilt staff fastball slider guy Jordan Wogu leads things off and there's a fastball right in there at 95 hello that sounded hard A little bit up. So how does Kumar Rocker end up at Vanderbilt? His dad is a football coach in Tennessee. He and his mom were in the area when his dad was actually coaching for Georgia, and they were in town. So they went a walk. They went to take a walk over at Vanderbilt. Got a chance to see the campus. Liked it. And then when it got down to crunch time, with the decision to be made about pros or other colleges, he went to dinner with Tim Corbin, his mom and his dad. And at the end of the dinner, he stood up and said, I want to be the best Vanderbilt teammate ever. And it wasn't a commitment, but it's certainly, if I'm Tim Corbin, I'm leaving thinking <laughs> we are in good shape. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> taking that as a bad comment at that point. All right, so we got a chance. We got a very good chance. The only thing they were worried about was the draft. As to whether or not Rocker would be taken high enough, ultimately his family decided that school was the right choice. I think it was a great choice. Wogu, and this one will get to the seats. I thought the words he used, though, were so telling about yes. the kid that he is. I want to be the best teammate ever. You throw teammate in there uh, for a group of kids in an age bracket that generally is about me, and he's talking about being a teammate. Not only is Corbin walking away feeling like I, I love this kid on my team, but boy, I love this kid in my clubhouse. And here's a future leader, too. I mean, it's one thing to have somebody in a club. It's another you can look at that can turn into a leader in a fairly short period of time. One, two. See you later. Strikeout number one for Kumar Rocker. How about setting the tone early with that fastball? We saw 19 strikeouts against Duke. All those were off the slider. This time, that's a swing and miss fastball up in the zone. Uh, he's, he's got the good stuff tonight, it looks like. It's it's early returns right there, but you can see so far in the NCAA tournament, 3-0 with 33 punch outs and just three walks. That usually plays. So Jesse Franklin, the center fielder. Oh, and one. 6'1, 295 out of Seattle, Washington. Went in the 37th round last year to the Mariners. He's having a very good World Series, 6 for 17. And this one to left field. Steven Scott not having any issue with any sun tonight as it's fairly cloudy out. And an easy second out. Talk about two personalities in the collegiate baseball landscape. Here's another one. Jordan Brewer facing down Kumar Rocker. This guy seems to walk on clouds. He swings and misses at the first one. He always has a smile. He's always upbeat. And how about that arm last night? That throw to nail Austin Martin at third base. My goodness. 
Kumar Rocker is locked in tonight. At least early on with that slider and that fastball combo. This is the A plus stuff so far for Rocker. He's a strike away from preventing Michigan from doing what they've done in every game, which is score a first inning run. Rocker rock solid. Two strikeouts, three hitters. Maybe in for something special. Big number 80. Bringing it here on the mound in Omaha in a must-win game for Vanderbilt. Mom fired up. Dad, business as usual. The NCAA College World Series is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Arby's. Arby's, we have the meats. Welcome back, everyone. And it's 0 0, top of the second inning. Kumar Rocker matching Isaiah Page. Phil Clark and Pat DeMarco, followed by Steven Scott in the second inning. Wow. Just two very different styles of pitchers, but it's not lost on us or anyone else. You had a coach in Eric Backage who said, We want our team to look like the United States of America. You have two starting pitchers who are African American here, game two of this College World Series. And the diversity on both of these teams is evident. This one popped up, right fielder Brewer out, second baseman going back, and whoa, Jordan Brewer makes a nice play as the KO Thomas kept backing up and backing up. Well, this is one thing that Michigan does with their defense. They play no doubles from the first pitch of the game. Look how far Brewer is. Top right of your screen. Comes a long way to get it. Thomas, until he hears Brewer, and he hears him at the last second, good focus on Brewer. Trusting his second baseman to get out of the way. How about this reaction? <laughs> that is not an easy catch. Now Pat DeMarco. One of five children out of Staten Island, New York, twice drafted by the Yankees. His dad Paul played at St. John's University. There's a good pitch in there for a strike, one and one. Slider. I mean, you love the fly ball. What, what would the chances be that you caught that ball that he just caught? Open mouth? Definitely, I would have caught oh, it. Goodness, I thought we you knew I was going to put that to rest. No, it's <laughs> never going to be put to rest. Come no. on. And first of all, my first step would have been back to allow the second baseman to make that play. <laughs> DeMarco, the third strikeout victim of Isaiah Page. He's gone to this one. It's it's a cutter. It's a change. You can call it whatever you want. He gets around this one. It's got a little slider action to it. Sometimes he'll flatten it out. Sometimes he adds a little bit of depth. And it's six to eight miles an hour difference from that fastball. Whatever Page throws so far, he's thrown with conviction. That's his third strikeout already. You cover a lot of the SEC. How many times do you think Vandy faces a pitcher like this? With this this velocity, Steven Scott sends one down the line, and this one is towards the corner, looking up. And if it's fair, it's gone. Foul ball, close. Just 87, 88, right-hander. And that's another foul ball that's been hit by a lefty, pull side. Lede did in the it. Air. Paul did it. Now Scott's done it, and all three have been far enough to carry out of the ballpark. That one just a tick early. Yeah, to your point, I mean, you usually see a little bit more velocity than this. Whew, that missed by about two feet. I think the key, though, tonight for Page is the ability to mix up and change and change speeds. Change eye level a little bit. Little bit. He's going to get some fly balls. That's a pretty good pitch. Um, and not be afraid to throw that fastball in. And early on, he's shown the ability and the willingness to throw the fastball in. Scott's been red hot hitting 325 in the four College World Series games. This one is hard on the ground. Kerr had to go under the glove. And only the second error that they have made at the College World Series. And that was the third out that went right underneath the glove of Jimmy Kerr. Play it right. All you got to do, you, can, you have two options. 
hands at first base. Get in front of it. You get in front of it, you have the pitcher is going to cover. You see how he's waiting for it? Flat-footed right there. He's letting the ball play him. Got to keep that glove down, but if you get in front of it, those feet continue to move. Then you can just use your momentum to toss it and give a perfect toss to, to your pitcher. Let's see what uh, Vanderbilt does with a little life here as Harrison Ray, the second baseman, up to the plate. Ball. Just down. It's going to be interesting the adjustment that Vanderbilt will make the second time around when they see Page. Page has thrown everything but the kitchen sink already to get through these first five outs to each hitter. Cutters, changeups, fastballs in and away. Ray, good bunter. He's come up with a ton of doubles lately. He's got 18 of them on the season. Really good speed, too, for a Vanderbilt team that has stolen 79 bases this year. When you compare that with the Michigan team that has stolen 103. Five foot 11, 200 pound junior out of Longwood, Florida. Chase it. We talk about Michigan, how deep they play. How about third base? Nelson right on the line. No doubles or two outs. They do this with one, no outs. They do, will not allow you to get extra base hits. Vanderbilt is 57 and 12, which means they rarely lose. When they do lose, they win again. They're 9 and 2. In the games that come after a loss, this may be a tough play on a slow roller, and Ray can fly, but he's thrown out by Jack Blumgren. He's faced seven, nothing across, and the Wolverines have Kerr coming up when we come back. He's going to have no problem going through this program, I feel like. I mean, he's, he's a freshman now, and he's doing big things. He's just a kid that goes out there and likes to compete and have fun, and, and he asks questions of the other guy, which is good to see, too, because he's, he likes to learn. Yeah. He doesn't just go out there and, and think he's, oh, I'm the best pitcher. I don't need to know anything from anybody, which is which is really fun to see. That was the testament a lot of the older guys said about Kumar Rocker, was just the fact that he asked them questions. He didn't come in, I'll know it all. He'll ask, what do I throw when it's 0-2, or am I wearing pants and a polo today? <laughs> now the first pitch, Chris, is to Jimmy Kerr. He's the cleanup hitter, and he has been cleaning up. Seven home runs his last 15 games. He's hitting 389 at the College World Series. Oh. Behind 2 0. We can talk all you want about the uh, recent draft and where the guys were taken. Uh, majority of them were collegiate players. Rocker said about this experience with Vanderbilt never oh. been a part of something like this. And that's kind of echoed by a lot of the players, especially at these high end college programs. Where you commit to a team and in a perfect world you end up playing in the postseason and get in Omaha. But for a kid that's experienced so much athletically, to say I've never experienced something like this, it's an endorsement for the college program. He himself is an endorsement for college baseball. Right. Just, just what he's done towards the back end of the year, just a freshman, so he's got two more years after this till he's draft eligible. But this is what a big leaguer looks like. Two more Rocker is what a big leaguer looks like. His dad, of course, was an outstanding collegiate football player at Auburn. Chases one there at 94, and Jamal Rocker has three strikeouts, first four at bats. So Kerr strikes out. Uh, we're going to go from Omaha to the Bigs. The New York Yankees, D.J. LeMahieu, who, of course, played at LSU, goes deep. For the Yankees, that's the 28th straight game with a homer. That's a record. He then was followed up by Aaron Judge, who homered, and then Glaber Torres homered. So the Yankees are hitting a lot of home runs tonight. And LeMahieu, of course, was a star with LSU in the College World Series not too long ago. LeMahieu started with LSU here 
Aaron Judge won the home run derby here. Fresno State. Yeah. A lot of people don't know they have a home run derby that follows this event. What a couple of days from now? Uh, Saturday night. Saturday night. Yeah. Oh, two. Blake Nelson. Oh boy. Kumar Rocker strikeout number four. The most impressive part is when you do the scouting report, you know he has a wipeout slider, but the fastball is the one that's been working big time. That one with a little cut to it. So far, four strikeouts, three of them on the fastball. So, Kyle, Eddie asked you, how often does Vanderbilt face somebody with the velocity of a page? How often does Michigan face somebody like this? There's not too many like this. <laughs> it doesn't matter who, what league you're playing in or who you face over the course of the season. Bullet tried to bunt that 95 mile an hour fastball. And that didn't work. He sends it back to the fans in the stands. 5 10, 175 out of Chicago, Illinois. Filthy pitch at 94. One seventy five at the plate, two fifty five on the mound. Eight straight strikes, the O2. Gone. Wow. Kumar Rocker. Five strikeouts through six hitters. May just be one of those nights, boys, because Rocker's got it all going so far. Fastball slot, excuse me, slider on the 4D replay, and that's five strikeouts so far. I might get a drink of water. Welcome back, everyone. The NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Game two, best of three. Michigan leads the best of three, one game to none. And nothing across for either team, no hits. We head to the top of the third. Isaiah Page and Kumar Rocker. Ty Duvall leads things off for Vanderbilt. And that one is hit on the nose to center. Franklin coming in, he's there to make the out. So one man down. I'm sure a lot of people for the first time are tuning in and watching Rocker pitch, and they are probably blown away by what they're seeing. Yeah, two different types of pitchers on the mound. One power, swing and miss. You see the focus, and it's been on since around the seventh inning of last night's game. And then on the mound, Page, it's more of a contact. He wants to get you out in less than three pitches. Let his defense work. First pitch to Julian Infante. He's the first baseman. Ball one. He bats ninth. He's got 12 homers out of that nine spot. He is... One of the seniors on this team, and there's a real good mix of classes on this team with seniors and juniors and sophomores. And of course, you get a big freshman on the mound in Rocker. Three sophomores, three juniors, three seniors in the offensive lineup for Vanderbilt and Rocker, the freshman on the mound. And essentially the same offensive lineup for the past few months. This is a good matchup actually for Infante. He allows Page to get that ball up, not chase the pitch down and away. Struggling a little bit here in Omaha. Looking for a second hit and swings and misses at that one. It came in at 80 miles an hour. Just off. Tim Corbin Good describes problem. him uh, as the the protector on this team, meaning he's got all that experience, the definition of a great teammate. Teammate. Both his parents were born in Cuba. He was born in Miami. Three, two. That one is into the gap, and it stays up, but not long enough for Brewer to make the play. Good job by Infante. His second hit, 14 at bats. What I was talking about with Infante, the velocity plays to his swing. He drops the bat head, 
right there before contact. And because he does that, it lets the ball get up a little bit. Strong enough to get that ball through. Finding barrel. Second time now that Isaiah Page will see Austin Martin starting to get a little stirring out there at that Michigan bullpen. I like what felt, I like what they're doing right now. Second time around, this team is too good once they see you once. That one gets past the catcher right through Joe Donovan's legs, and we saw that a couple of times last night. That time. And now in a scoring position, Julian Infante. Yeah, the hand's in the right spot, but this is the one where you got to drive the glove and the bare hand right into the dirt. You can see it comes all the way up. Just as that comes up, you're trying to play the hop, especially on that breaker ball that's going to stay down when it bounces. That, that hit right in front of the plate, I think. It just stayed all the way down. He's got to drop the knees. He knows it's he go down to one. He didn't even go down to one. You've seen both do that the knees off the ground. Too. And if you do that, right. if you don't go to the knees, it's a lot tougher to keep those, keep that glove and the bare hand all the way into the dirt. So the first chance of the game is Vanderbilt. And Austin Martin looking at a 1-0 count. Time. Martin's one of these guys that will impact the game like every time he plays, whether it's with his legs, with his glove, with his bat. He's in the middle of a lot of things. And as a sophomore, he's got another year until he's drafted. He'll be a very high draft pick. Watch both knees. You want them to drop to the ground. Never got any of them. And once the ball went through, that's when the left knee touched ground. A little too late. Ten homers. 19 doubles. And this one's slow roller up the middle. Longgren there, got in front of the second baseman, and he makes the play. There's a little confusion out there between Longgren and Akeo Thomas, but they pick up the second out. It's pretty good work by Blomgren right there, too, because his feet entirely stop. Because the second baseman, Thomas, and the shortstop, Blomgren, are coming together. Watch his footwork when he gets there. Everything stops. Now we've got to start again and try to get momentum over to first base. You're facing a guy in Martin that can absolutely fly, and it looked like the throw just beat him. Where was Thomas going on that ball? He wasn't shifted. He's playing a little bit more up the middle, holding the runner. Just like the base runners have to know where the defense is, especially in the outfield, the infielders, with all this shift going on, they have to know right. where their teammates are. Nickname is J Square. JJ Blade bats now. Runner at third, trying to break through against Page. And this one is pulled again down the line. And it is again foul. JJ did this yesterday. This was a no doubter. Great balance. Left on left. It's exactly what he needed. Sometimes you need those left handed pitchers to be able to balance you out a little bit, keep you tall in that box. So far, J.J. Blade with two long foul balls into the stands. Oh. I don't like this matchup if I'm Michigan right now. You got Blade who leads the country in home runs. The off-speed pitch from Page is going to come back into that barrel. I know he was a little bit early on the one before, but second time around, I'd be really careful here. I would not give him anything to hit. And there's more to... Split A to just power hitting 352, 14 doubles to go with those 27 home runs. 71 runs batted in this season. And a future member of the Miami Marlins selected fourth overall in this 2019 draft. Left field, there's nobody there. Will Bullock be able to run it down? Yes. Boy, did he close quickly. Looks like that was earmarked for the gap, but Christian Bullock, they got three center fielders on Michigan, and they're catching everything. We've heard the doubters, people, you know, saying we're a long shot. People are, are going to say what they want to say about it, but the thing that makes us special is that we don't really care. We're here for a reason. We just have to believe our team is capable of winning everything. So Michigan has sort of heard the doubters, which, of course, with their play, they created the doubters. This was a top-20 team when the season began. 
Then they won the Corvallis Regional. They defeated the number one team in the country in UCLA, the overall number one seed in three games in a super. I mean, Henry pitched game three, coming out of the hospital. That's movie stuff. The first championship round appearance since 1962. And trying to do what Ohio State did in 66. But this is a really good team, and they are yeah. playing at a high level. This guy's pitching at a really high level, and man, he has been so good with that first pitch strike. Fastball in there for Kumar Rocker, who has struck out five of the first six. things about Rocker that are a little more unique too to him he and the catcher called their own game this one on the ground and that's past the dive of Austin Martin Jack Lundgren takes a hard turn but he will retreat back to first for the first hit of the game for Michigan if Vanderbilt wins tonight behind Rocker and company and force a game three We'll be here tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, and that one will decide who the 2019 College World Series champion is. That's game three at 7 Eastern Time tomorrow night on ESPN if necessary. Let's see how Rocker deals with the first base runner for Joe Donovan, who homered at the College World Series. He's the catcher. Longgren, good speed at first. Really good bump by Donovan, laying it down, and down to second goes Blumgren. Good job by the catcher, Joe Donovan. Moves Blumgren into scoring position. Fundamentals of the game. Play small ball, especially when you know Kumar's tough to score upon. Great execution, especially on that slider. Get it down, bend the knees. Move that runner over, sacrifice yourself, and see if Akeo Thomas can get the job done. Thomas is another guy who is a good bunter. You got uh, Austin Martin playing fairly deep at third, now kind of taking a few steps in. Only 5'7, 165, right out of Chicago, Illinois. Side. Among the leading hitters at the College World Series, Thomas, he's 4 for 11, batting 364. He's based three times in game one with a double and two walks. Slide stepping to the plate is a 1 1 5 to home plate with a runner at second. That is the respect that they are giving Michigan for the way that they've attacked on the base path so far this College World Series. It is sometimes it's too much respect. Sometimes it's too fast to home plate. You can see those last two fastballs missed from Rocker. And, and if you're too fast, if that lower half is too fast to home plate, your arm does not have enough time to catch up. That's when you'll see that high fastball from Rocker. Down there. Oh. Just below the knees, and now three and one. So Rocker calls his own game. During that Duke no-hitter with the 19 strikeouts, the pitching coach, Scott Brown, said, I said nothing to him ever. There was no communication. Tim Corbin didn't say a word to him, not even after the eighth inning. There was kind of a look like, of course, I'm going out. We're not talking. Piece of the inside corner, according to David Savage, K zone. This isn't a pitch that you're supposed to swing at one, it's inside a bit, but two, you're looking for a pitch out over the plate, 3 1. 
good take by Thomas. Outfield shallow. It'll be difficult for Blumgren to score, especially with Blade where he's playing and a really good arm in right field if it gets to him. Look at that outfield. Kind of like Wimbledon, you can see where the outfielders have primarily stood. The grass is discolored where the outfielders generally stand at the baseline at the All England Club. Michigan has two men on. Back to the top of the order we go. Headaches. That's what the bottom of the order has done for Michigan this entire College World Series. Take a lot of pitches, get on base, and create a lot of havoc. A little meeting on the mound as Jordan Rogu comes up for Michigan. And Scott Brown's also going to make a walk out to the mound to talk to Rocker. Kumar started by striking out five of the first six. In this third inning, a single, a sacrifice bunt, and a walk. Scott Brown did his college baseball. It's SUNY Cortland. So he's out there talking with Rocker. Hey, for more coverage of the College World Series interactive brackets, we invite you to go to NCAA. Com. Kyle, what's your guess on what they're talking about? You scan a report on Wogu just to make sure everybody's on the same page right now and understanding who's on the base pass. Just to go over what they did his first at bat. Wogu struck out to start this one on an elevated fastball. It was up and away. Didn't look comfortable that entire at bat against Kumar Rocker. Rocker doesn't look quite as comfortable out of the stretch as he did out of the windup. He mm -hmm. was very quick to home plate. Fastballs were up. And K.O. Thomas fell off a really good one to keep it 3 2 and worked himself a walk. Wogu was late on every pitch. Outfield will play him op opposite field a few steps. But they deep and right. Talk about a self made player. Six months, he's made tremendous strides. They didn't know if they were going to keep this guy. They put him in as a pinch runner. He stole a couple of bases like what we see out there. Now he's your leadoff hitter. D.H. laid on that one. That came pouring in. Stay there. Stay there. After seeing that and seeing the first at bat from Wogu in this one, he is not seeing the fastball or has not pulled the trigger early enough on that fastball. And you can see the barrel lag. When that barrel lags like that on the fastball in your mid-90s. Stay with that pitch. If you throw him a slider right here, it gives him more of a chance. Blomgren at second, Thomas at first. Ball down. Rogu. Watch videos of Justin Upton and Aaron Judge to try to figure out sort of the back path that he would most like to emulate. Grew up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, right across the street from the university. Slow roll, the runners go, and the runner is not tied. They throw Wogu out at first, and he's hurt. Jordan Wogu may have hurt that leg of his running to first base. He's grabbing the left leg in that quad area. So we'll keep an eye on Wogu. Backage put both runners in motion, which eliminated a possible double play. But Jordan looks like he's in some pain. Pulled up about three or four feet short of first base. Right there. Mm, that one hurts, guys. 
That one hurts. For both Wogu and Michigan. You're a designated hitter, and you also depend on your speed. Big man like that. Tough to stay loose. He's not able to put any weight on that left leg of his. And Kimberly Hill, the athletic trainer, Eric Backage, both out there to help Jordan Wogu, the sophomore, off the field. They need to get some players out there to help him out. Leadoff hitter and designated hitter, and a huge part of what Michigan has done to get to this stage. Off the field, and no pressure being put on that left leg. Chris will try to get an update as soon as it's available, but we'll go out. Yeah, I, th I think that one's self-explanatory there. It's, it's either a quad or a hip flexor or a groin, and if you can't put any weight on it going off, it's clearly not a good sign. Now two on for Jesse Franklin. First pitch, strike one. Chance for Michigan, and again, the aggressiveness of package in that offense to set those runners in motion. Help prevent what would have been a potential double play ball. Talk about reverse foot blitz. Left-handed hitters struggle against Rocker on the season. We're talking almost a hundred points lower than right-handed hitters. It's because of that slider right there. They've come up with a handful of big two-out hits, Michigan, to get here. Not here, though. Six strikeout for Kumar Rucker. He leaves two men on. And at the end of three, Vanderbilt nothing. Michigan nothing. Welcome back to the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Joining me is Eric Backage. Coach, I know it's early, but have, do you have an update on Jordan Wogu? He was saying his quad um, felt it, felt it pulled. So I don't know. I have to. I haven't seen him since he went back there, but um, have to see how he is. And uh, you know, we've got a couple guys on the bench. If he can't go, that'll have to step up. But if he can't, that's obviously a big loss for us at the top of the order. But if he can, then he'll be back in there. For Isaiah Page, when he hasn't pitched since regionals, how do you prepare him for this big of a moment? Well, you know, he and Coach Fetter and really our entire pitching staff, all these bullpen guys who haven't thrown, they've done an unbelievable job of treating their bullpen work, making it game-like. And that only happens when the kids make it that themselves mentally. So besides the mental reps that they're doing and the drills that they're doing in the bullpen, um, you know, they just have they have to take a look at what Carl Kaufman, Tommy Henry, and Jeff Criswell have done and how they've attacked the zone with multiple pitches. And, you know, so far Isaiah's, you know, he's given us a good uh, a good go at it here, you know, throwing three pitches for strikes. And, you know, that's exactly what those other three guys have done. So proud of the way he's uh, he's given us a start here. He's given us a chance. And then obviously we just got to continue to make an adjustment to, uh, to Rocker, who's really good. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. <laughs> One man down as Paul grounds out. Here's Philip Clark. Flew out to right his first time up. Paul strike at the knees. Well, the other storyline in this is you got the mentor and the protege with Corbin the mentor and Backage the protege. Nice laced. Oh! the glove of the leaping at K.O. Thomas and Philip Clark's aboard with a single. Well, this
this is what happens when you get a 99.7 mile per hour exit velocity coming right at you. Weren't able to get the leaping ability, but off the bat, it came quick. Sophomore DeMarco struck out in the second inning. Ball. Double barreled action out there in the Michigan bullpen. Angelo Smith, the lefty, Benjamin Kaiser, the other lefty. With the cutter, with the slider, the approach for right-handed hitters has to be the right center field. Stay on it. We saw what Infante was able to do on a 3-2 pitch. Drive the ball the other way. If you try to pull your... That's exactly what he tries and he wants you to do. Foul tip. One and two. Marco's been chasing baseball his whole life. He moved from New York down to Georgia midway through high school so he could play baseball year round. TD Ameritrade, top of the fourth. College World Series Finals, game two. Michigan wins tonight. They are a national champion. Three. On the corner, strike three. Strikeout number four for Isaiah Page. Who has shown us a lot of poise so far out there for Michigan. Highest fastball velocity is 88 miles an hour, but he's not afraid to throw it in. And we've seen it to righties, we've seen it to lefties, and then comes back with. Call it a slide, he can call it a change, you can call it whatever you want, but he's got enough velocity off of it, adds a little bit of depth. It doesn't have that tight movement you see from a slider sometimes. It has the fall that you see more from a changeup, but it's had this reaction a lot. It's had guys all the way out in front. This time he locks up DeMarco with a fastball inside for another strikeout. Here's a guy that's got some power in that bat, Steven Scott, and there's a changeup, and he's way ahead of it. My first hitting coach in the big leagues was Rob Carew, and he would say it's a big mistake to look for one pitch, the guest slider. Look location and adjust off location, but always look fastball. I thought your first, I thought your first hitting coach was your dad. In the big leagues. Yeah, I mean, Tony Perez, the Hall of Famer, I thought we were starting to give lessons, you know, when you were like three or four. I mean, I, that's where I well, would have... In the big leagues, that's why when I got to the California Angels back then, it was, they were the California Angels. Rod Carew, he was my first hitting. Who, by the way, pretty good hitting coach. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah. You're gonna learn. Rod Carew's a pretty good one to learn from. And Rod Carew's hitting coach in Milwaukee. And yes, he was a pretty good guy to learn from. It didn't rub off on me very much. I needed more of a bunting coach, and, and Rob was pretty good at that. <laughs> Rob was pretty he good was. at that, too. He handled the bat. Yeah. But those great lefties of that time, you got Gwynn, you got Carew, you yeah. got Boggs. Just back to ball. One, two. He's gone. Look at Page. Listen to him come off the mound. He's Max Zeros with Kumar Rocker for a three and a half. Keeping Vanderbilt in check, just like Tommy Henry last night. A lot of emotion from Michigan. Five Ks. Back. Hey, we got the old social media thing buzzing with Juwan Howard, who was here last night. What an amazing evening in Ohio. So happy for Eric back. And she says, Desmond Howard's in the house. One down, one to go. He says, this is such a fun bunch of young men to watch. Desmond Howard, he's in the crowd. He's got uh, what looks like Demir Howard, his son. Desmond Howard Jr. as well with him. So enjoying the game and rooting on Michigan, trying to get them a national championship with a win tonight.
Jordan Brewer, Jimmy Kerr, Blake Nelson against Kumar Rocker, who tugs that one is behind 2-0. Up playable Blade, although he slipped coming in, and now he's going to try to make up ground, and he dives to make the play. JJ Blade lost his footing, and then he charged in and made a heck of a defensive play. All right, I'll go there. Don't panic. Slips on the first step, then comes on in, makes a wonderful play, adjusting, coming in. No doubt in his mind he was going to make that play. Really? There's no doubt in his mind he's going to make that play? In his mind. <laughs> now Jimmy Kerr bats. Hey! Boy, it's just a different guy out there. Rocker, an easy 95, and he's been depending on that fastball a lot tonight. Oh. Uh, Kyle forwarded us an article today just about the technology that is used by places like Vanderbilt and Michigan and other top programs. You know, the exposure that Rocker and others are getting to the latest and greatest in the technology that Major League Baseball is using. It's got to be hey. such a huge advantage. I mean, they go into these pitching labs. The Vanderbilt was one of the first. Eric Johnson started it. It's continued after that, and, and since Chris Fetter came over from the Dodgers, the pitching coach, pitching coach for Michigan, he, he was a minor league pitching coordinator for the Dodgers. Right. Eric Backage brings him back two years ago. When you look at some of the most advanced teams right now at the big leagues as far as analytics go, the Dodgers are right there, and each have, have brought it to each of their respective programs. Kumar Rocker has brought his stuff today. Elevated fastball up to 96. Yeah, quite as many sliders as we've seen in the past. It feels like he's leaned on that fastball a little bit more, and you can see why. But these are two of the elite pitching coaches in the entire game right here. Scotty Brown there for Vanderbilt in his seventh year. Chris Fetter, former pitcher from Michigan, now back in a pitching coach role. For people that hear terms like Rapsodo and Edge Tronics, like what, what is that? What, what are the advantages that these guys have now? What are they using? What Rapsodo can do, and you've seen all these big league teams use it right now, it's his immediate feedback. So it's feedback on arm angle, spin rate, spin axis, velocity. So think of it like this. If you're in a bullpen, you're using something like Rapsodo. After every pitch, I can turn around and see exactly what the data says that pitch did. So I can work on it pitch to pitch, whereas years in the past, you were relying on your eyes, on feedback from the catcher. It wasn't necessarily hard data that came back and said, this is exactly what happened on that pitch. Now you've got immediate data that tells you exactly what it is. The Edgertronic camera just gives you the ability to slow everything down and see what your hand and arm angle looks at at release. That's why, I mean, the, the top collegiate programs are using both. Yep. Trackman figures into that, and obviously we're seeing it at the major league level all over the place. Another outstanding game for that guy, Tommy Hunter, last night, 2-0. And, oh, and this one on the ground is short. That one is kicked. Long throw. Not in time. Nelson beats it out. Paul had it go off the heel of his glove. And Nelson reaches on an error. We talked earlier about Jimmy Kerr at first base, not getting in front of it. Well, here, the shortstop, this is one that you have to backhand. Reason being, now you're going to be flat-footed and you have to start again to go. He's flat-footed there. You see it completely. Then lets it eat him up a little bit in between hop. No chance to get him at first. Here's Christian Bullock back up again. Struck out his first time up, and that one sails way wide, throw behind the runner. That time in five, they did get off the bag. <coughs> 16 for 16. Henry's numbers at the World Series, if you didn't get it, 2-0, uh, 18 strikeouts, one walk. 
in 17 and the third inning pitched. Superstar stuff from Tommy Henry, the lefty. There was a big meeting on the mound when he was coming out of the game last night. He reached out to Eric Back and said, What'd you say? And he said, I just thought that was the appropriate time to thank him for everything he did because we're likely not going to see him in a Michigan uniform again. Well, they're likely not here without him. Oof. They're not playing in this position if Tommy Henry doesn't have the two outings he did here. Ball to outside. So we talked about the signs and what Michigan does. You'll see along the belt, and that's where most of the players keep it. Blake Nelson, a runner on first base. He'll peek down right there. It's a set of numbers that come in from Eric Backage. It's no different than we've seen pitching coaches relay to catchers when they look down. Three numbers indicate a certain play. Looks like a big Excel spreadsheet, but you can't pick the signs. That's the biggest difference because it changes every game. There's plenty of dummy signs in there. A lot of them, he may look down and say, be a dude or something like that. Just a, a small motivational message to your base runners and your hitter. But it's simple. The number you look down, it tells you exactly what the play is. Not a lot of confusing, confusion. You never get, I missed the sign coach. That's a big lead now. 16 for 16. Stolen base attempts this year. Not going, and that one is in there for a strike to even the count up at two and two. And most importantly, for all you coaches out there, just think about it. How many times in your teams do you have a player miss a sign? Here, it keeps it simple for the player. They can focus on what they do. They can do a fake steal if they have to to get a, a good jump or not. Any sign you want, all they have to do is look down. It's also quick. And that's what I like. It's it's very quick. It's quicker if you're calling pitches, it's quicker to get pitches in. It's quicker to put plays on. You're not waiting for an entire series of signs and then potentially a wipe off go through it. Again, it's three numbers, look down, you know what you're doing. He is going this time. That one's high throw down. Diving play to make sure the ball didn't get in the center field by Ethan Paul. But Blake right, Nelson steals his 17th base in his 17th attempt. This is a mistake up the middle right here for Vanderbilt because it wasn't a great jump on first base by Blake Nelson. But watch the late break. And it was almost like Paul didn't know exactly who was going to cover. By the time he gets there, if the throw's dead on the base, then maybe. But he doesn't have time to set his feet. So all the momentum is going into the base when the throw was there. It sails a little arm side off the right arm of Philip Clark. And Blake Nelson's now 17 to 17 in stolen bases this year. Chance for another two out RBI for Michigan on the three two. Did he go? Yes, he did. No, says the third base umpire. You heard Philip Clark say yes, he did, but he doesn't count in that vote. Good call, third Good call. base by Klein. Now again, go back to that arrow at shortstop. You continue to add pitches to Kumar Rocker, and this is exactly what Michigan wants to do. Go deep into counts, get that pitch count up, and try to get to that bullpen. Jack Blomgren. He's got the only hit for Michigan tonight. Got a good swing at 94, but he fouled it off. Pulled a slider into the six hole for the only hit of the game for Michigan to lead off the third inning. That time elevated fastball. Blomgren a little bit late on. Got a chance to talk with Jack before the game. The sophomore's been dealing with a broken pinky for a long time. Uh, yes, it's still broken. <laughs> yes, he, he confirmed. Fixed it after the season. Yep. Couldn't pop it back into place when it was first dislocated and broke, so he plays on. A one runner goes to third in the dirt, and they both will move up 90. That's their game. They continue to do exactly what they did last night, and that stay aggressive on the bases. Beautifully done right here. 18 for 18 now for Blake Nelson. Getting a good jump at second base, but most importantly now, putting the pressure on Clark behind the plate with Rocker slider. Center field to DeMarco shaded towards right field in the dirt. Good job by Philip Clark. Great block there. 
Talk about how nasty his slider is. Get the right angle, drop those knees, let that chest protector out front, create that angle to just deaden the ball down straight to you. Runners at second and third. Two down, bottom four, zero, zero. Chases that slider, and we're two and two. Tough take and a really good take right there from Blomgren. I like fastball here. I like it just because of this reaction and recognize spin held up on it on one that may have caught the outside part of the play, but if not, just missed. Now three and two to Blomgren, who has the only hit of this game for Michigan. 16 of the 29 runs Michigan has scored have come with two outs. And this one to short. Fielded cleanly in the throw over in time. They will strand two in scoring position. Rocker continues to roll along. Michigan still with only one hit through four. Omaha to London. Why don't we do that? On Sunday, Major League Baseball makes history. They'll be in London. Two games set. Red Sox and Yankees. London Stadium, which of course is uh, famous for hosting the 2012 Olympic Games, has undergone a dramatic three-week transformation into a Major League ballpark. Red Sox and Yankees live from London. We'll have it Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN and the ESPN app. Eduardo's mom and dad are over there now. What's the review? What are we What are we saying about it? They like it. So far, so good. They're a little jet lagged, most likely asleep right now. <laughs> Reluctant to fall asleep on the flight. I recommend that highly. No sleeping on the plane. I recommend that you do. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, good. Back in March, Isaiah Page threw five innings against Manhattan. That's the longest he's gone, and here he is starting the fifth inning in a bunt attempt foul. by foul. Harrison Ray goes foul. Michigan's been the aggressor again tonight. There's a there's a feel like last night to this game, just in the style that Michigan continues to play. Obviously, the runs are very different. He jumped out to a four nothing lead last night. Vanderbilt made it close. It was four to three at one point in that game last night. And Kerr wet yard. They added a couple. It was seven to four as a final. I love that last inning from Michigan, though. You get a runner on with a two out error, then steal second, go double steal to steal second and third, and, and prove again that we will play our style of baseball. Oh. If you're that guy there, how much longer will you allow Page to go? And again, you're looking at the scoreboard. They've only got two hits. He's got five strikeouts. But next time through the order, you're looking at the third time at Isaiah Page. Oh, to go. It's not going to be much longer. Page's longest out of the year is five innings. Yeah. And just second time through the order scared me a little bit. Mm -hmm. And he's handled it. He's done a very good job. Third time through the order definitely does. I think it scared Eric Rackage too, because that bullpen has been active ever since Austin Martin came to the plate. This one is into left. It's going to get down. He threw one at 79, and now you get real good speed on the bases in Harrison Ray. Pitch stayed up in the zone, and this, this is where it can really hurt him. Now you have that speed. Have to be able to throw those pitches down in a way to be effective against righties and use that changeup the same way. So Jeff Criswell has made his way out to that bullpen. There were a handful of guys, Criswell, Brewer, Henry, that all grew up playing high school ball in the same area. All right, Eric Package. Yeah, that, that is going to be it. So Isaiah Page did an excellent job yes, he did. on a day in which they were debating starting Chriswell or not. He got him into the fifth inning. He hasn't allowed a run to a Michigan team that scored a bunch. Shakes the hand of Page. 
No way there is Benjamin Kaiser, one of the more effective lefties out of Michigan's bullpen all year. He's coming in. As he gets to the mound, he'll congratulate Page. And we'll take a timeout. College World Series in Omaha, fifth inning. Vanderbilt with a fast runner at first. And Page out of the game. Isaiah Page comes into this one, makes just his fourth start of the year, and he looks really comfortable from the get-go. Two strikeouts in the first, one in the second, two in the fourth for Page. Fastball, little cutter mix tonight. Used the ball out of depth when he needed to. That's the strikeout of Steven Scott to end the fourth. So a leadoff single here in the fifth will end the night for Page, but if you're at Backage, Chris Fetter, this entire coaching staff from Michigan, you got to be elated with the job the freshman did tonight. Stealing it. 0-0 game as you take a look at the numbers on Benjamin Kaiser, 6-3 junior. Hi. Good numbers this year. Throw a fastball 90 to 93. If the fastball is not working, he'll go to the slider. He works quickly. This one up the middle. Taylor made double play ball that goes underneath the legs of Blumgren. And wow, that's costly. Perhaps staring at the bag before he had the ball in his glove. And first and third for Vanderbilt. Nobody out. Keep it, let's keep an eye on his eyes. Let's see where they were tracking if it was the ball or the runner. Let's see him take a peek right before the ball came in to see exactly where the runner was right there, then go back down. But by the time he got there, the ball ate him up. No chance, crossed his feet. Watch him take a peek up, then look down. Just sped up on him a little bit. Best chance of the night for the Commodores, Julian Infante, and then top of the order. Nobody out first and third. Infante oh. looking at a safety squeeze right there. Nobody out. Nelson even with the bag at third. With Ray. If he shows safety again, I would love for Nelson just to stay there. Hurt. On the corner inside, one and one. Right. The reason I say that is because the easiest butt is towards first base. Kerr holding on. Duvall at first. Got any action with Duvall going here? Not on a straight steal, no. Yeah. Julian Infante, good power in that bat. Oh, yeah. And just Go misses. On. Kaiser came on. That was a double play ball that went underneath the glove of Blumgren. So instead of two outs and nobody on, you got nobody out and two on. spot here for Michigan and Kaiser with Austin Martin standing in the on deck circle for Vanderbilt. This is where if you're in Fonte, you're looking for one pitch. Dead red, 3-1 fastball. who came into tonight one for 13 singled his first time up he got it swung over it big spot in this game in the fifth inning 0-0 zero, zero. three two got him almost a quick pitch as Kaiser picks up his first strikeout 3-1 fastball, 3-2 fastball, and he just got it underneath the barrel of Julian Infante. Both swings look very similar. That 3-1 fastball, you know he was sitting on, just couldn't square it up. And then this time they go back to the exact same thing. Big strikeout right there for Kaiser. Now you're one pitch away from getting out of this thing. Tough guy to double up. Uh, Austin Martin has been aggressive on the first pitch so far this CWS. Hurt. 
pitch has some sink to it, and he's ahead 0-1. This is where you have to, as a right-handed hitter, know that that sink is there. Try to go the other way with it. Thomas playing up the middle. Negate the rollover. It's now 0 and 2. Big spot for Ben Kaiser. He's one of the captains for Eric Backage. That's how you win games. You don't allow the I opponent guess. to hit with runners on. 0 2. Oh. Such a big at bat. You have three lefties following Martin. Kaiser, left handed batters, four for 44 against them this season with 22 strikeouts. Slow roller, tough play. They'll get the run. Oh, what a nice barehanded throw by Blake Nelson for the second out. But Vanderbilt on the board as Ray comes in to score. He did the job. Put it in play any which way you can. Pound it on the ground and a great play at third base. Nelson barehanding it, the only chance he had to be able to get the speedy mark in first base. Throws off his right leg. Perfect strike over to Kerr. Tremendous defensive play there by Blake Nelson. J.J. Blade bats with Vanderbilt on top. And they're going to intentionally walk Blade, take the bat out of his hands. He goes down to first. Eddie gave you the numbers against lefties. Shows you the respect they have for the Miami Marlins number four pick in this draft. Don't let them beat you. That's the bottom line. No, and if you're Michigan, you go left, left, left in the 2 3 4 slot. Now, Ethan Paul from the left side. Philip Clark follows from the left side. So you still maintain that left on left matchup even by putting Blade at first. In the Louisville game, this was the guy that had the big hit, Ethan Paul. And that highly charged emotional showdown with the Cardinals. In the dirt, that gets passed. Joe Donovan. And now to a scoring position. Maybe a little cross up there as Donovan gets together with Ben Kaiser. For a team that doesn't like to get their signs oh, yeah. mixed right there. They got him crossed up. Donovan's lucky he didn't break his right hand right there because that looked like it caught the palm of his bare hand first before it hit any glove. That move was him expecting to see a breaking ball. That move was expecting that ball to break down towards his glove. Instead, it was his bare hand that caught the fastball first. Now they'll this? put Paul on. Yeah, they're going to walk Ethan Paul. I'm not big on this I don't play. like this one. Now you're forcing Kaiser to be too perfect. No room for error whatsoever. Philip Clark, a left-handed hitter, also coming up to the plate. This is the trust that they have in Kaiser, and Kaiser hasn't been out there in a while. Vanderbilt up 1-0 in the top of the fifth. They win. We'll have a game three tomorrow night. Michigan hangs on and comes back. They will be the College World Series champion, but all the chips have been pushed to the middle of the deck here on the top of the fifth. Back-to-back -back intentional walks to load the bases. How about the smile on the mound right there by Kaiser? I like that. Been waiting almost two weeks to be out there. <laughs> He's just happy to be standing 60 feet away. They face Philip Clark. Oh. Ball one. So you get Ty Duvall who reached on that error. He's at third. Bladé intentionally walked at second. Paul intentionally walked at first. 68 big RBI for the cleanup hitter this season for Vanderbilt. Sophomore of Franklin, Tennessee. Oh. Now you're 2 0. Oh. Bobby 
obviously the challenge of walking the base is loaded is you got nowhere to put the next guy. Jesse Franklin is playing very shallow in center field and he is shaded towards left. There's a huge gap between Franklin in center and Brewer in right. Franklin's playing really shallow is what he's doing. playing the depth that uh, during the early days of TD Ameritrade you used to see outfielders play. A little bit different from what we're used to seeing Michigan outfielders play. We've seen it play a lot deeper. In fact, probably deeper than any other team here. This time Franklin shaded further in than we're used to seeing. Eight homers on the season for Clark. That's pulled and now it's 3-1. A good one, and that's in the hole. Fielded, fired to first. Oh, that's a big play by Jack Flumgren. He had a range to his right, get down on a knee, and the guy that committed the error that led to the run helps prevent any more from coming in. Welcome back, Tim Corbin. Joining me, you put one on the board. How do you keep your offense rolling? Just got to try to find first base. I mean, I think if we if we get a, a base runner, a leadoff base runner, or another base runner, I, I think we're going to start working here a little bit. We just got to break it at some point. Kumar Rocker was rolling there the first two innings. What have you seen from him throughout the game? Well, I think he's been pretty good. I mean, they haven't they haven't hit him that much. So I think if he continues to throw strikes, we we can uh, keep him out there a while. Your team has faced elimination games before. What do you like about the way they respond to pressure? Well, I don't think they look at it that way. I mean, I think they look at just another game and they keep everything very localized in terms of what they need to do. They don't really leave their lane too much, and that's the maturity in them. I appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. One other thing, Carl, I've learned from Michigan that Jordan Wogu has suffered a quad injury and will not return to today's game. All right. Thank you, Chris. The leadoff spot oh. scheduled for yep. the three hole tonight in this one. You have Joe Donovan at eight, K.O. Thomas nine, and then we'll see who bats for Wogu. Appears as if Dominic Clemente's got a bat in his hand down there. As you see, a couple of the guys in that Vanderbilt bullpen start to work. That one's pulled foul. Donovan's got some power in that bat. Nine home runs as you take a look at Eric Backage talking with the on deck hitter Akeo Thomas. 69th pitch of the night for Rocker and a good slider to even it up at two and two. Some spin on it. See it go the other way. But Ray played it well. Balata. That <laughs> was an old Balata. Probably a smiley face in it. A little Omaha to the bigs. NC State was here not too long ago. And this guy was playing for him. Trey Turner. 12 to 14. And they were here in 13. That goes yard. Nationals are playing a lot better baseball. They're on top of the Marlins. 6-1. Got away from all the power schools in the state of Florida and ended up there. NC State. Trey Turner was on that club. Carlos Rodon was on that club for NC Heart. State. Waiting for Carlos Rodon to just stay healthy and put it together at that next level. Just filthy in college when he was here. Oh, 
It almost appeared as if Akeo Thomas was looking at Kumar Rocker when he swung instead of at the ball on that one. That's what that slider will do. You have to try to keep that nose on the baseball as much as you can. Oh, here we go. No. <laughs> Ticket blasted right there from Rocker. The fastballs to start this inning were right at 91. Now, this one, when he needed it, he still got in the tank. Outside corner, right down at the knees, 94, and it holds plane right there. So, so this stuff still plays. Yeah, you know, it sure does. And batting now for Jordan Wogu is Dominic Clemente. Played in 37 games, started 17 of them, 85 at bat, 17 hits. Six one one ninety, a junior out of Heartland, Wisconsin, played at Arrowhead High School. Oh. Rocker was so exhausted after that nineteen strikeout no hit performance. His teammates, who have been amazed at times by what. Kumar can put down after a uh, pitching performance. Shocked to learn he just shut it. There was there was no eating out after that game. And the way he came off the mound in that Duke game after doing what he had done, he was he was just sort of exhausted. Totally toast. Off the end of the bat, this one is going to fall without anybody getting there in foul territory. Yeah, he, he had nothing left in the tank and it wasn't a big celebration the, t the teammates were the guys that were into the celebrating he was like I'm ready to just kind of go sit in the bench and after a 19 strikeout no hit performance the first in super regional history just something about Kumar Rocker that makes you think that's not the last time that he and history are going to be connected there's a strikeout it was called by Philip Clark as well Nine strikeouts for Kumar Rocker. I'd say he looks good. He's allowed only one hit. Feeling better than a night like this. Music is loud as me and my friends. On a Saturday night that ain't never gonna end. Ain't nothing better than a night like this. No, there ain't nothing better than a night like this. Hey! Hard to beat it, young and old enjoying Omaha in this College World Series on a perfect night. We got lollipops going. We got a heck of a baseball game. A tremendous start for Kumar Rocker. Nine strikeouts, one hit. As we head to the sixth inning, Vanderbilt wins. Will force a game three. Michigan trying to come back and win this and thus get a championship. But a good start to the top of the sixth inning. Leadoff single for Pat DeMarco. They got a window into what Tim Corbin wants to do when they get base runners on early right now. When he was talking to Chris a minute ago, he said, we need to get guys on first base. And then, remember exactly what he used. But in essence, we need to get guys moving around a little bit. I don't think you're going to see DeMarco standing on first base for this entire at bat. Looks down to Corbin to get the sign. Steven Scott, power hitter. Tenth round pick of the Red Sox comes up. That one is up. Scott was a football player in high school, had shoulder surgery. It was a little torn between the two sports. But for a long time, he wanted to go play at Vanderbilt. T-ball since he was about four years old. Off inside. One rides inside, 2-0. Jack Weissenberger and Angelo Smith warming up 48 on the left 40 on the right And there for a strike
one two oh fastball. Why not three one fastball. Not going and coming back up here. Good sinking action right here. Let's see. Coach Corbin puts the Marco in motion. Oh. Two on, nobody out. When we're done, MLB takes over. Rockies and the Giants. There's Buster Posey. He, of course, was uh, one pick. Played for the Florida State Seminoles and Mike Martin. That comes up next. Rockies and the Giants. There is a tremendous uh, picture of Tim Kirchin out there wearing Bruce Bochy's baseball cap and Rick Sutcliffe's jacket. <laughs> I, I bet that one sees television here pretty quick. He was giving away gloves. What a memory for the kids. So again, Chris Fetter, who was once the minor league coordinator for the Los Angeles Dodgers, pitched at Michigan. He moves over to the mound. The way Rocker is pitching, and you got Brown, the closer out there, who has been lights out. Things are trending in a good direction for Vanderbilt. All sorts of possibilities with Harrison Ray at the plate. Runners at first and second. Five, five. Six sacrifice punts for Ray on the season. I'd let him swing away here. He didn't. He laid down a good one. Who's going to get it? Throw the first top play and a good one. That's well done by the Michigan defense and an outstanding butt by Harrison Ray to move him up in a scoring position. And the reason I said that was because against the left-handed hitting, Kaiser has been so good. And Ty Duvall now from the left side will come and hit. So you sacrifice that right-handed hitter now. A tough guy to double up. Now you have runners at second and third with Ty Duvall, the left-handed hitter up. The well bunted ball by Harrison Ray. There was Duvall in the eighth hole flew out. Maybe Backage has seen enough, and he's going to go to his bullpen. Vanderbilt's been knocking on the door here the last couple of innings. They got one in the fifth, and they got men in scoring position here in the sixth. Surprised he's doing he's doing this with a left-handed Duvall at the plate. With how good that Kaiser has been against left-handers this year, Ty Duvall the hitter due up right now. Eric Backage points down to that bullpen, and it looks like it'll be Weisenberger coming in. Familiar name for those in the Michigan circles. His grandfather was also Jack Weisenberger. Helped him win a Rose Bowl in 1948. Scored three touchdowns against the Trojans. It's grandson's turn tonight. Welcome back. Pitching change here gives us an opportunity to take a look at the Capital One Cup standings. The update as teams compete for a combined $400,000 scholarship donation from Capital One. Winning team of the College World Series gets 60 points for their school in the standings. And uh, Virginia, by virtue of that college basketball championship, sits at the top with 127. Kyle Peterson, Stanford Cardinal, 85. And the women's side led by Stanford, kind of running away with it with 183 points. UCLA, North Carolina, FSU, and Maryland round out the top five. So here's Weissenberger, the junior, 6'3", 220. Fastball breakable for Weissenberger, fastball in the low 90s. This one just surprises me based 
on how good Kaiser had been against left-handers this year. I don't think Vanderbilt was going to pinch hit for Ty Duvall. He was due up from the left side. Now you bring in the righty to face him. I have two major concerns. One is the control that Weisenberger has. Walked a lot of guys so far this season. 63 innings, 46 walks. Big arm. He was drafted in the 20th round by the Oakland A's. Those 46 walks in the 63 innings are in his career here at Michigan. Second and third for Duvall. One down. Leading one zip. Here comes the infield. Oh. Florida State did it earlier in this College World Series, and it worked for them. Runners at second and third. They crashed as soon as Weisenberger started his delivery. Now they'll play in. This Vanderbilt team had a school record 13 players selected in the draft this year, which tied an SCC record. Time. And this was one of them. Duvall was drafted on the final day of the draft. Twenty fifth round pick of the A's against the twentieth rounder of the A's. Change up in there for a strike to go one and one. Andy wins will be a game three. Michigan comes back. They'll be the College World Series champions. Vanderbilt did not play a clean game last night. Michigan has made two errors tonight. Kumar Rocker has limited him to one hit. The infield back in again. Ball, it's down. Didn't miss by much. At the knees, but now three and one. Zone had it as a strike. You don't have to throw the fastball here. 3 1. He has already thrown the changeup for a strike. I go change. One fastball. Right down the middle. Lefties love that pitch down in that zone. I think he was looking change up here. First base open. What do you think, Cop? I like change up here. I my fastball in that same spot either. Duvall's taken it the last two times. Jack Weissenberger brought in to face Duvall. No nope, bounce it. That one gets all the way to the backstop. That's going to bring one run in from third. DeMarco he overthrew it. A walk first and third. Two nothing Vanderbilt. <laughs> Joe Dunneman had no chance. That's just the third wild pitch of the year for Weisenberger, and that's just a 3 2 fastball. He gripped too hard. Tried to make the perfect pitch, held onto it just a little bit too long, and yeah, there's Donovan can't do anything with that. Julian in front. 
a, another opportunity with runners on. At some point, I think he might run into one. He's got 12 home runs out of this nine spot. away no advancement for a while I thought Duvall might read it try to head down to second but he didn't shout out to the folks at Hawkins Field the home field for the Vanderbilt Commodores a whole bunch of people there with a free watch party certainly enjoying what they're seeing tonight has been such a home field advantage for these Commodores. Fonte twice is squared for a potential safety squeeze. Two hands, probably rather seem to go down with one right there. It's just a little bit easier to reach, but instead goes off the edge and now back to back balls to the backstop. That had two more Vanderbilt runs here in the sixth. to a dangerous hitter. Swinging for the downs. Let's throw another fastball right there. Infante's top hand has been his worst enemy. Drops that bat head completely. You see it on the takes. You see it on the swing. Drafted by the Marlins. Weissenberger walks in front of and that brings up Austin Martin. Guys, we talked about the walks from Weisenberger. Last two batters he faced on the eighth of this month walked both of them. So far here, two walks. Backage looking out to his bullpen, almost as if to say, who am I going to take out there? Looks like Angelo Smith, the lefty's going to come on in. And has spun a little bit here out of control for Michigan. Top of the sixth, Weissenberger coming out. Vanderbilt's up three zip. And remember, Kumar Rockers on the mound, having allowed just one hit. You know, I, I don't care what Austin tells you. He's, he's not a power hitter. Austin Martin, gone! One swing, one run. That one is gone again! Austin Martin with a two-run bomb. Oh, 
know he's not a power hitter, but he's uh, at the plate. And he has double-digit homers. And now he's going to face Angelo Smith, the lefty, fourth pitcher of the night. They used three in their first four games. We made a big deal out of the fact that they only used Kaufman, Henry, and Chriswell. And here we are with the fourth pitcher of the game. Vanderbilt having their way. Kumar Rocker pitching outstanding. A sophomore to Thornton, Illinois. At 5'9", 160, he's finding himself in a hot spot with two men on. And his team down three zip. You see the season numbers right there for Angelo Smith, but in the NCAA tournament, he's been at just one ball game. Came in, walked two guys, did not get an out. This was the fear for Michigan. You get through the first four games with three arms. Good news is you're 4 0. Downside is you know you're going to need more guys. And, and those more guys, with the exception of Isaiah Page, who was outstanding in the starting role tonight, have not looked comfortable. That guy has. Sure Kumar Rocker's been outstanding. Sure has. Still smiling, regardless of the outcome tonight. They'll either be champions or play for a championship tomorrow night. But they're down three zip and in some trouble here in the sixth inning. Good note for Smith, though. 20 inherited runners. Seven have only scored out of those 20. Out of the 140 batters he's faced, one has only been able to take him deep. Strike one to Martin, who was thinking about going to a Jacksonville Community College. He dreamed of going to Vanderbilt. Oh. Once he discovered that Vanderbilt had some interest in him, he was all in. And when he got there, he struggled a little bit with the transition from the high school to the college level. Had to have a couple of sit-downs with that guy right there. And now he's as focused as anybody with a bright baseball future to go with a bright future off the field. Ball. He's one of the more dynamic players in the entire country. Martin with an OPS above 1,100 this year, 18 stolen bases, double-digit home runs, more walks than strikeouts, and just a sophomore. Foul. Everybody all right? Got me, and then I got your helmet. Foul there at the plate. Showed a lot of Juwan Howard and Ward Manuel, the athletic director, last night on the Michigan box. Malcolm Turner, the Vandy athletic director, has done a phenomenal job supporting all of the sports there. And just like Howard was brought in, they brought in their own guy and Jerry Stackhouse. And you can see Stackhouse there. Their relationship goes back a number of years. Turner ran the NBA's G League, the development league, and brought it to extraordinary heights. He now runs the athletic program at Vanderbilt. And he convinced Stackhouse to join him there. Stackhouse was sort of earmarked for the NBA. And instead, he saw what Vanderbilt had to offer. And he'll try to reinvigorate that program to new heights. Football coach Derek Mason sitting right there. So last night, Michigan coaches in the house. And tonight, the Commodores represent Martin strikes out. Here's Splade. Ball to outside. I'll tell you, there's a feeling. I mean, it's three zip, which is not insurmountable, but it feels like we haven't seen Rocker in about an hour. Yeah. It's a good point. Something to watch for when he goes back out. When he's been out there, he has been. Dominant. Last time he threw a pitch was about 27 minutes ago. Oh. Your pitcher, Kyle, at what point, like how many minutes between your last pitch and your next one becomes a, a potential problem? It's always tough because you want to get back out there as quick as you can, but that means you're not scoring a lot of runs. <laughs> so there's there's a balance there. 
20 25 minutes is not easy. He's staying warm over there, but still, it's sometimes it takes you a few when to get back out. And he stood the entire 27 yeah. minutes. He doesn't sit much at all. Wow. It's a big man. <laughs> Talk about the development of this Vanderbilt program. Tim Corbin will tell you when David Price was accepted into that school and he committed to go there. That was Play. a program altering player and everything is fed off of what David Price did for that program. Oh, here we go. No one misses. Did he go? No. Price was really torn between not going to college and going to the pros and when he got on campus and was exposed to what Vanderbilt could offer. Me, he talks close. a lot about the classroom stuff and the brotherhood and and that more than he does baseball. But Corbin will let you know the David Price admission to Vanderbilt and subsequent playing for the program changed everything. And it was Eric Backage that recruited him. Good pitch right down the middle. Three and one and Bladet took it. Think about the major leaguers that have been through that Vanderbilt program that followed David Price. It's becoming a who's who of Major League Baseball. Yes, it is. And this guy will eventually add to it in Blade. Got Pedro Alvarez, Tyler Beatty, Bueller. Ryan Flaherty, Carson Fulmer. Price and Fulmer are actually facing each other tonight in the Red Sox White Sox game. Carson starting tonight. He's on the mound. Sonny Gray, David Price, Swanson. Swanson and Price, number one overall picks. Kyle Wright. Three, two. He swings at ball four. That one was caught. Lede is out. About a half hour from his last pitch, Kumar Rocker will take to the mound, leading three zip here in Omaha. Kumar Rocker bringing us back. So we take a look at our game summary. It's brought to you by Buick. It has been all Rocker on the mound. Look at his numbers. Five innings, nine Ks. And it has been, uh, I would imagine they would describe it as a sloppy game from Michigan so far. Two errors, a handful of balls that have gone back to the backstop. I would agree. Didn't make an error in the first three games. Here made one yesterday. So now three errors in the past two from Michigan. The guy on the mound wearing number 80, though, that's I been the biggest difference go. tonight for Vanderbilt, giving up just one hit as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Let's see with that 30 minute uh, time period between pitches for Rocker. And if there's any effect on him, he'll deal with Franklin, the two hole hitter, Jordan Brewer, and then Jimmy Kerr. A big story in this one was Jordan Wogu, the designated hitter for Michigan, running down to first. Uh, appeared to injure his quad rather significantly, and he is not returning tonight. 89 mile an hour fastball in there from Rocker. Two 89 mile per hour fastballs back to back after this long layoff. That one hit hard. Great shift off the foot of Ray. Plenty of time. Out. Jesse Franklin hustled. Ray did a great job to keep it in front of him, but he couldn't throw him out. Didn't see if that guy's hit off the edge of the grass. No, it didn't. Yeah, but it took off once it hit the grass. Got him right on the right thumb. Safe right there. The only thing I don't like about the shift, they're going to take a look at it, but I think it'll be quick. The only thing I don't like about the shift when you play your second baseman that's shallow is that first short hop or, or in between hop you can get right there off the grass. I would prefer your second baseman play a lot deeper there because on a ball that's hit that hard, you've got more time to react 
and it's still a short enough throw to get over there. It's that ball that could hit the collar mm -hmm. that can take that tweener hop right there. I didn't play infield, Eddie, so I, I could be totally wrong on this, but it just it's not easy to read that hop in the in the spot that Ray's in. And that's one that you really don't practice a lot, especially when it's hit that hard. And that's one thing that Jesse Franklin has been able to do. Get good barrel on most of the baseballs he's seen here at the College World Series. Let's keep an eye on the velocity of Rocker. We see him still trying to stretch that shoulder out. Three slowest fastballs he's thrown in this game have been to Jesse Franklin. Dangerous hitter Jordan Brewer, the right fielder. Slider in the dirt. Two errors apiece in this one. As Ray got charged with one there. It's been a work in progress for Brewer. Donahue, Donovan behind the plate tonight. 12 homers, Jordan Brewer this season. And this one is to left off the end of the bat. Shallow left field. It's going to drop. Like a backspin off a tennis racket or a pitching wedge to the green. That thing just stuck. And now two are aboard. Different tilt on this one. A lot more hittable than early on. We saw the velocity on the fastball. Now the velocity on the slider. It's a tad low. You see the vibration right off the end of the bat. He'll take it. Outfield playing deep. Lay it up. Now you have base runners. And now you have Jimmy Kerr. And this is this has been his World Series and as far as Michigan goes. Tripled in game one, biggest hit that they had in that one. And we've seen the home run power as well. Three homers, eight RBIs, all school college World Series records. Michigan was here in 84 with the likes of Sabo and Hall of Famer Barry Larkin. Stuff's just a little bit different right now. It is. And I think some of it is the long layoff, some of it is just the toll of the season. And the number of high intensity pitches that Kumar Rockers had to make here in the last three or four weeks. Fastball was up to 96 earlier in this game. We've seen a lot of 89s in this inning. Blew it by him, and he liked that one. And the adrenaline kicks in to get a little bit extra right there. And he got Jimmy Kerr to go up and out of the zone because of the respect for the fastball and the slider back behind it in a spot that you need a strikeout on the mound. Rocker threw his best fastball to inning right there. That had good carry, stayed off the barrel, strikes out Kerr for the third time tonight. Still, the concern is the location. Missed location big time. Up and away on it. Have to still keep an eye on him. That fourth inning paid a toll on him with that error from Paul. Added 12 extra pitches to the game. He's been stretching that shoulder a lot. Tyler Brown, the righty, who's the closer, and Jake Eater, the lefty, throwing in that Vanderbilt bullpen. Ten strikeouts for Rocker. Time called, and that was a little Throw bit it. late. Throw it. You're a pitcher on the mound. Just throw it. This one to left. Over there is Scott at the line. It'll hang up four and he'll make the play. Not tagging. 
Find a runner. So Rocker. Now one on away from getting through the sixth. A lot of focus on dad, but mom. Lou Rocker. She's been watching the entire time. And as Tim Corbin said, I've heard a lot of kids who say they want to go to school, they want to go to school. It was the mom that really implied he wants to go to school. And then Kumar ultimately made the decision. But mom was spearheading the effort to get the education and the experience on a baseball field. Christian Bullock. Ball. Michigan has run in situations like this, perhaps force a throw down to third. Not going, gets the call, strike one. It's tough to hit, that ball was way outside for, for Bullock. Clark is really good at blocking that breaker ball, and it's one thing to keep it in front. It's another to keep it close enough to you. The base runners can't go anywhere. We've seen Michigan going on the dirt ball and not waiting to see where the ball ends up because Clark has kept it so close they can't. If you go on that one and he bare hands it, you're out at third base. It's not just the ability to block it. It's how close to home plate can you keep it. And Clark lands it almost right on top of the dish. This one down the line and right, Lede going over, and he's there to make the play. So they had two men on, and they can bring none of them in. Umar Rocker all fired up as he comes off the mound through six. Vanderbilt, three nothing. Gorgeous night here in the nation's heartland. Welcome back to the NCAA College World Series. It's presented by Capital One. Eduardo Perez, Kyle Peterson, Chris Button down on the field in our Folks that have been here for about two weeks, including Wade Hewitt, Mark Griffard, Steve Haas, our great camera people, Ralph Hammock, Ken Ayers, John Lawrence, Jerry Genowine, Greg Logan, Jim Foley, Shane Marshall, Sean O'Halloran, Tom Sedley, Michael Ritchie, Larry Faircloth, and Brad Pace. Thank you all for the efforts day and night doubleheaders that have led us down to this best of three. Here's Ethan Paul. Yes, he did. Right side of the infield back right there. Ethan Paul trying to take it with him. Jimmy Kerr, the first baseman, was playing extremely deep like he is right now. Kale Thomas, the second baseman, was. You could see the action right there for Paul was to try to drag it and take that ball towards first. Bats guy here tonight. Is that looking in the direction of the uh, Peterson abode? Let's get this straight. Okay. Rises in the east, sets in the west. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> get my bearings from it, figure out. Yes, that's the right direction. It's out there somewhere. Yep. <laughs> So Eric Backage and Tim Corbin both coached at Clemson under Jack Leggett, but Corbin actually has his wife Maggie to thank for getting him the job. They weren't dating at the time. They were just friends from Corbin's time at Presbyterian, and she knew that Leggett was looking for an assistant, so she called him up and she said, hey, I want to recommend that guy down at Presbyterian named Tim Corbin. The way that Tim says it, he says, why don't you call that nut down at Presbyterian? Right. So he ends up getting the job. They eventually get married, and uh, Maggie has now had a long marriage to that nut who was down in Presbyterian. <laughs> it's still very much a nut, I think she would acknowledge, but boy, have they been successful together. And make no mistake about it, 
Backage will tell you this. Corbin will tell you this too. She played a significant role in the growth of Vanderbilt program. She is a baseball nut herself and uh, was oftentimes sending out flyers and part of the recruiting process was Maggie Corbin. Very independent, funny woman. We talked about Backage showing up too, by the way, for that interview with Corbin. He had all that athletic training equipment in his trunk. Backage was a trainer and considered being a trainer for a long time, but one of the people he trained was one of the daughters of Maggie Corbin. She subsequently became a terrific tennis player. Maggie, two daughters, Molly and Hannah, trained, I believe it was Hannah. Yes. And that's also, and there's Hannah on the, the one on the far left. She'll take the glasses off now again. <laughs> She'll know she's on. They're letting her know, and there they go. <laughs> Don't catch me with those on. This one is hammered down the line and right with some carry on it. It is over the wall and a home run for Philip Clark. That'll get some high fives, and you can see the former coach at Vanderbilt football wise, now Penn State's and Franklin is right there. They became very good friends while they were. At Vanderbilt, but Clark's home run makes it a four-nothing Vanderbilt lead. Over 100 miles per hour, 103.4 to be exact. Slider, good backspin on it, and this ball left on a line. The more they can keep adding on the less that they have to use Brown if needed. Well, I don't think he's done. No, and that guy's doing tonight what Henry did last night. You know, yes, great pitching like we've seen the last two nights from these guys can slow down offenses. And look, Michigan's offense was rolling coming into this thing, and Rocker has just silenced him. We saw the energy from Rocker after his last strikeout, and we see him still continuing to be in the middle of everything. Hunt's good teammate. Great teammate. Ball. For Phil Clark, that was the ninth home run that he's hit this season out of the cleanup spot. Back up the middle on the short hop. Keo Thomas throws across, and there are two down here in the seventh. James Franklin, of course, the uh, head football coach at Penn State. He and his wife, Fumi, became very close with the Corbins while at Vanderbilt. Fumi was out here earlier this week, spending time with Maggie and Tim. The coaching fraternities at these schools, and then they branch off to go elsewhere. Those relationships generally stay strong. Left center field. Franklin came in. Now he's going back, and it goes off the wall. He misjudged that one off the bat of Steven Scott. He's in with a double. It just shows you the power that Steven Scott has. He had two home runs in a game earlier in this College World Series, and Jesse Franklin misjudges this one because you don't expect the ball to carry this much. The flags aren't moving, and it's not really going to left center, but Scott just gives it a ride, waits back, backspin out to left center field, stays on the slider, and just about drives it out of the ballpark. Franklin came in on that, then he retreated for Steven Scott, his 21st double of the year. And the Vanderbilt bats giving Rocker some wiggle room. Harrison Ray with two down in the seventh. And here comes Eric Backich again. They've used four pitchers tonight. They have used three for the majority of the postseason. A 
Well, was the star last night. He's really been the star for Michigan through the tournament. Bakic is making another move. All right, the Major League Baseball game between the Giants and the Rockies is currently underway. You can see that one on ESPN2. Back to the College World Series after this timeout with Vanderbilt up 4-0. 4D replay here. Philip Clark start from the backside. Head on the baseball. Follow through perfect. Great balance. Exit velocity again. And look at Hawkins Field. Long chairs are out. The cheers are up. They're happy in Nashville. Michigan will bring in Willie Weiss, the freshman out of Portland, Oregon. At 6'3", 205. Kind of knew going into this one, if Criswell wasn't going to start, that you'd, you'd likely see multiple pitchers. And that's exactly what we're doing. And remember, Isaiah Page did a really good job. When he left, they hadn't scored a run. That's the guy that's going to start. They're not going to use him tonight, unless there's a comeback and there's a close situation. But he's going to be the starter. So they have. I think you'll see Kaufman start tomorrow. You do. And I think you'll see Kaufman yeah. start tomorrow. They really like Chriswell out of the bullpen and keep it that way. It, it is set up for him. We'll see if if Vanderbilt uses Tyler Brown tonight. And if they don't have to, if Vanderbilt can hold on and they don't have to go deep with Brown and Chriswell doesn't come into the game, we got some bullets ready to go tomorrow night on both sides. That game will start at 7 o'clock Eastern time if there is a game three on ESPN. Mind everybody, too, the SEC Network is here, and they are providing terrific coverage of this College World Series as well. There's Kaufman. His last start, he didn't have his best Hi. stuff. And we'll see if that's the direction they go. It would be a little odd to bring Kaufman out of the bullpen, take him out of his familiar starting role. And for Nebraska. It's kind of chilling just there. Security blanket. Harrison Ray's got a dad who was a high school wrestler, a younger brother who's a big football player. That's a slider in there for a strike. That play the oh, other night he fight. made against Louisville. If that play isn't made, does that ball spin aw enough away that maybe a run scores on that play? Or is it not because it's on the infield? But there was a runner on second when he came diving. If that ball doesn't get caught, does it create enough problems? I, I think the runner would have stayed at third there. Yeah, because it's on the infield? Yes. That ball was moving in a lot of different directions when he made that play. This one popped up and it's going to get deep into the seats of a sold out TD Ameritrade here. On a Tuesday night. You get 21 homers in this College World Series. 23 was the uh, high water mark the last couple of years. And when the park has the wind down, this is a very fair ball park. Yeah. It just turned into that. Among the many people that are here tonight, Jeff Wilpon, who of course is part of the ownership group that owned the Mets, but also huge supporters of Michigan baseball and softball. Their dynamic support has helped build Michigan baseball and softball to where it's at. There you see, Jeff. And this one popped up center field. Franklin, he, lost it. he got it. He got it. That's the third out. Vandy, four zip, bottom seven. Rocker bouncing back to the mound when we come back. 
take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance. Go to work, Kumar, and do it again. He's been the ace of this Vanderbilt team, one of the main reasons why they're here. 19 strikeouts in the Super Regional. Pitched great in his first start here at Omaha. Now pitched into the seventh inning. He's done it again tonight. Just two hits allowed through the first six. Ten punch right. outs. That's a Vanderbilt record in the College World Series. Right. Fastball maybe down a little bit last inning and found it when he needed a little bit more. Still out there in the seventh. Here are the numbers. Michigan 0 for 13. 10 Ks with two strikes. They made a living with two strikes and two outs until they ran into the Rock. 76% of his strikes on a breaking ball. And what feels like a very comfortable to this point, very comfortable 4-0 lead. There's closer extraordinaire Tyler Brown, who has an extraordinary story of his own. Bumgren, Donovan, Thomas. For a guy whose father was so accomplished on the gridiron, Kumar was really married to baseball for most of his childhood, and the decision was, there was no real decision. It was baseball. But there was not going to be a football conversation. That uh, strikeout 19 game and the no hitter Tracy was actually I think at Tennessee with the rest of his coaches at a banquet so he had to watch it on his phone. Which is great if he had done it you know 25 years ago there was no phone but now we got a chance to watch it but he's watching it on a tiny little phone and the son is throwing a no no with 19 strikeouts. Lou did not like that at all. So you're shaking her head. Yeah. Trying to disrupt the timing of her son. Oh. End of the bat. That one's going to get down in front of the left fielder, Scott. That's a couple of hits have been off the end of the bat may have fallen well short of the left fielder. So Blumgren is aboard. Yeah, second base hit so far off the end. The first one by Brewer, this one by Blumgren. Not the same bite that it had earlier. Ball staying up a little bit. About to throw his 99th pitch of the game. Think about it too. I mean, he is a freshman. He has just an inordinate amount of talent in that right arm of his. As Tyler Brown keeps warming up. But this is a freshman in college who, in a super regional, back against the wall, no hit Duke. And here he is at the College World Series for the second time, pitching really well. You, you hate to put expectations on a guy, but boy, the eye test and what you see from him does make you think like this is a star that we're watching in the making. The eye test says it. the other thing is is just the way that he reacts to big moments because it, it doesn't feel like he thinks it's very big. I think they're going to get a balk right there on Rocker. So base runner will go to second base. He thrives in the bigger moments. The emotions don't get too much for him. And I love your take on pitching at this level. You know, and I love I don't mean to to suggest that there's some expectation and he may fall short of it but when you see him do you see greatness you do I mean at, at some point you're probably going to need to see a third pitch and that's the one mm -hmm. thing that Kumar Rocker hasn't really quite honestly it was he hasn't had to do it yet. the stuff has been so good and obviously the, the outcome has been so good but that's that's the one thing that you know, if he goes out and pitches in the summer which we'll see he does if he does because at any count kind of starting to get up there but I think in his sophomore year, his junior year, that's that's where you want to see that third pitch, a change up come in. Look out. Wow. That was scary. Wow. That one came right in on Donovan. I, I would think that that ball hit the bat right in front of his head. Yeah, and he's he has to take a deep breath right here. He protected himself with the bat with the bat. Oh my goodness. Put the head down. I do not blame him one bit. That is scary. He's lucky he didn't hit his finger too. Once you had finger wrapped around the front of the bat, it, it it missed his finger by less than an inch.
Donovan had a brother who was committed to Michigan, would have been a senior here, passed away. So, so much of the season for the Donovan family has been about the brother. Ah, that one also inside and fouled it off. It hit the knob that time. Well, both of those pitches don't make you think in right now. Umar with his slider that he has in his back pocket. Now it's the time to throw it. Already with a College World Series school record, 10 strikeouts. And whatever team drafts them, by then the changeup will likely be there. But it's not something that they ignore. They claim to work on it every time he's on the mound, and it's not something that they've perfected. But let's not forget, he's the one that calls his game. It doesn't come from the bench. So between Clark and him, that's, it all depends on how much run support he gets to see if he can work on it during the game. Strikeout yeah. number 11. That's why he doesn't throw it very much. Because that one is so good. 11 strikeout on the slider right there. And for Kumar Rocker, I think, I mean, that you'll see him working on the changeup probably a little bit more in the summer, a little bit more in the fall. Tim Corbin on his way out doesn't waste any time. They will go to Tyler Brown in the bullpen. But the freshman was outstanding yet again. Six and a third, 11 strikeouts for Rocker. What a security blanket for Tim Corbin in a game. They had to win to keep their season alive, and he'll get a standing ovation heading to the bench. The legend of Kumar Rocker only grows tonight. Still a giant August 1st? I say no. Doesn't feel like it. You know the market's going to be huge for Bumgarner. Agree. I don't think he's a giant. Well, be some teams that trade for this guy right now. If you could at the deadline, <laughs> Rocker, 11 strikeouts, two walks tonight, six in the third, is responsible for that runner on second base. He'll hand it to the closer, and if you're in the Vandy bullpen, you can probably take your spikes off right now because Tyler Brown's coming into the seventh inning. He's coming in to finish this one. One of the best closers in the entire country. Eight walks, 63 strikeouts for Brown. Mid 90s fastball to slider. He has saved all three World Series wins for Vanderbilt. First pitch fastball 93 to Akeo Thomas. Very interesting road that Tyler Brown has had to travel to get to Vanderbilt in this College World Series. His mom was stricken with cancer when he was young, 13. He had a drive her to the hospital because she was so sick and yes at 13 he drove her to the hospital Ball. at that point the traffic issues that he might deal with be damned he said I got to deal with my sick mom she later passed away in high school he blew out his arm all that adversity there was a level of appeal to Tim Corbin to see how somebody who's handled all of that would be at the collegiate level. And then had a baby who was born with Down syndrome after the arm blew out. And it is amazing to listen to him talk about his child and how fortunate he feels to be able to be the one that is there to support her and deal with the Down syndrome and the joy that is brought into his life. And Corbin fell in love with the guy's heart. Fell in love with his resiliency. Well, it stayed with him after a Tommy John in high school. Right. Two two. And in so many ways, they've been rewarded. Baseball, not the greatest of which. Brown has been a huge leader for this Vanderbilt team. your closer coming out of the pen is knowing that he's going to be around the plate eight walks on the season he will throw strikes 
with his primary and secondary pitches at any time. The good news is Rocker broke a sweat. You can see it. There was a lot of effort put into his performance on the 2-2. Oh. Holds up 3-2. and two. And in an odd way, all those challenges and the adversity that Brown dealt with, as he said, when he stands on the mound, like nothing is as bad as some of the things I could deal with. Like you guys who look at this and use the word pressure, you haven't walked in my shoes. Two, that's in the hole. Blondin rounds third. He's coming hard. He's in there safely. An RBI for a KO. Thomas and Michigan's on the board. I like the call, even though you're down four nothing. Base hit. Sam Blondin right here. Good secondary lead. Worst case scenario, runner would be at first, throw, overthrows that, easily can spin at second base. You have to continue to play your game, and that's what Michigan does. Put pressure on that defense. Well, they got a guy that can certainly steal a base out there at first in Thomas. And Dominic Clemente, who's the designated hitter, once Jordan Wogu went out, bats for the second time tonight. Only one out here, bottom seven. The closer is in for Vanderbilt. Ninety-three in a tough zone for Clemente to catch up to. Say goodbye to Dominic Clemente. Guys, watch Coach Schnabel. We talked about this yesterday. If he does not do a single thing, doesn't put his hands up, you keep running. That's the sign over there. Nick Schnabel, seventh season. Where's number 23? Same number. As that man right there. And a nod to Keith LeClaire, the former head coach at East Carolina, where both those guys played together. LeClaire died way too early from ALS. And when they were East Carolina and then moved over here to Michigan, they both, after that Super Regional, just looked at each other because LeClaire never got a chance to bring a team to Omaha. And that was the promise they made to him. Without saying a word, they both knew that they had accomplished a part of that mission for LeClaire. Thomas knocks in the first run for Michigan behind two and one to Franklin trailing by three in the bottom of the seventh inning Vanderbilt wins there'll be a game three three and one and Jordan Brewer 
the Big Ten Player of the Year, is on deck. Seen anything at all from Brown that would worry you at all or not? Oh, not given his history. I mean, he's not a guy that walks too many, and you think he's going to have the ability to find it, but he's about 50-50 right now. Eight strikes and seven balls in his first 15 pitches. gets by and that'll allow Thomas just to jog down to second but the tying run now comes to the plate that time. and Jordan that Brewer time. we'll be on the air at 7 o'clock Eastern time if there's a game 3 tomorrow night Coverage starts on Sports Center at 6. Jordan Brewer goes through his pre -bat, bat ritual with 12 homers. 58 runs batted in. Nice play. Have to go after the Big Ten Player of the Year because on deck, we talk about Jimmy Kerr 0 for 3 tonight, but he's had so many late inning heroics here in Omaha. Last year, Jordan Brew was at Lincoln Proud Community College. He was off the radar. Division I colleges. Major League Baseball wasn't even thinking about him. A five-tool right fielder. They have three regular outfielders, and they got hurt, so he got playing time. And now, as he said, my dream literally has come true. And all he did was turn it into the Big Ten Player of the Year. Third-round draft pick to the Astros. That's not a bad turnaround. Trying to shut down a Michigan oh, potential strong. rally. Hey. Green pitch on the corner, and Brown sends Brewer back to the bench with a bat in his hand. They strand two. Be looking slider right here, but Tyler Brown comes back with a fastball. Two strikeouts for Brown alert. Allows an inherited runner to score, but we go to the eighth in Omaha. It's 4-1 Vandy Boys and Kumar Rocker has been at it again tonight. Sports Center follows Major League Baseball. Inside Manny Machado's return to Baltimore, where he was a star for so long. Is Clay leaving the Bay? Clay Thompson's time as a warrior may be up. And the Pro Bowler, Akeem Talib, is in the studio. Sports Center tonight after the Rockies and the Giants on ESPN and the ESPN app. There you go. Back here at TD Ameritrade. Ty Duvall leads things off top of the eighth. Vanderbilt up 4-1 to one over Michigan. Tyler Brown now the pitcher. Of record for Vandy. And he's got to get six outs, including the bottom of the ninth. Is that the big Miz right there? Yeah, that's the uh, that's the mighty Missouri, the mighty Miss, or Big Mo, as I was told on Soch today. It's the big Mo. So she's always right. Yeah, Got to stay in touch with the people that are watching. Give you a lot of good, positive feedback, constructive <laughs> criticism. <laughs> <laughs> Center field and deep. Franklin goes back. Then he puts the brakes on, and Duvall is retired. Big part of the ballpark at night here. We've seen many that have tried to go to center field at night. Yeah. 
By the way, Manny Machado did hit his longest home run ever at Camden tonight. Did you see the report? Major League Baseball. Everyone's now acknowledging that the drag coefficient on the baseball is a little is different. This breaking news. <laughs> really? <laughs> I had no idea. The cue ball aspect of it is making it fly through the air a little easier. Okay. We're starting to get 505 feet of home runs from Milmar Mazzara. All I want is that let's just use those baseballs in the Derby. Let's see. Let's see if we can get to 500 or longer. Let's see if we can get the wind blowing out in Cleveland. We'll be in good shape. Ball to inside. Kyle said earlier Aaron Judge once uh, won the college home run derby. They'll have that here Saturday. Judge went deep tonight. So did Glaber Torres for the Yankees. So did DJ LeMayhew. And they won again. This one to right center field hit pretty well. Going back to the track and right at the wall. That one is reeled in. Julian Infante. His bid for his 13th comes up just a couple of feet short. Omaha, the bigs, where are we going? Uh oh. Alex Bregman, star shortstop for the LSU Tigers. 13 and 15 goes big fly. And Alex Bregman's home run has allowed the Astros to extend their lead over the Pirates 3 to 1. They're starting to get healthy over there in Houston. Springer activated today. They went through a little bit of a slide without uh, Springer. It's amazing how when you remove one aspect of that team, you know, two. I know that they've had a, they've had several injuries, but uh, yes, losing Springer, who was kind of having a first half MVP type season, he's back. The Yankees have gotten healthy. Oh. Two balls hit hard so far this inning. Duval and Infante. I think if those were the Major League Baseballs, those would be two homers. That last one would have been. That one was hit on the nose as well off the bat of Austin Martin, but this three loud outs. Just another one, two, three inning. It doesn't matter how. Michigan needs the bats to get going, though. Running out of time. Four, five, six, two up. Michigan Wolverines. Let's take a look at some of their last champions. The 62 baseball team starring Dave Soup Campbell. The basketball team starring Glenn Rice, 1989. So the 1997 football team split it with Nebraska. Yep. And the 1998 hockey team won the NCAA championship. Baseball team is one win away. It does not appear as if tonight's going to be their night. Grandpa Kerr, he knows it. And there's Dave Campbell, who has basically become our Michigan correspondent. Been outstanding. And we hope Soup is doing well. We know he's watching. Long time baseball tonight. Analyst and a analyst on a lot of the major league games we did through the years. Good man to be around, Soup Campbell. Papa Kerr watching as the ball goes to third. That took a tough hop, but Austin Martin ate it up. First time that Jimmy Kerr has put the bat on the ball tonight. He had struck out his private previous three times. One man on the left side of the infield. Ball takes a big hop off the grass. Austin Martin takes his time with it. Follows the throw. Perfectly done to Infante. Blake Nelson. Oh. Swings at one. Tyler Brown throwing a little quicker with a little more accuracy than the prior inning in which he got out of a jam with two on. as a hitter that for 
Vanderbilt, knowing that a guy like Henry wasn't going to be on the mound, and you find out Coughlin or Criswell's not starting, there's a bit of a relief. I would think that for Michigan, waking up tomorrow, if they don't come back tonight, knowing that a guy like Rocker is in pitching game three would be a little bit of a relief. Not only that, also Brown, if he goes through with this, throwing two and two-thirds innings also is a relief. I get the sense like we saw with Coastal Carolina where they kept parading the same guy out of bullpen. If they got a chance, he, he's going to be on the mound tomorrow night. He would, but probably not the same guy, though. No, I don't think he can come in and get eight outs. Right. That's for sure. I mean, maybe you can call on him to get three. It should be Carl Kaufman from Michigan, Mason Hickman for Vanderbilt if the score holds tomorrow in game three. Line shot right at second. Quick inning for Brown. Will continue 4 1. Vanderbilt on seven pitches. The NCAA College World Series is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Look at TD Ameritrade shining there on the lower left part of that screen, downtown Omaha. They just lit up beautifully tonight, the Bob Carey Pedridge. That's the Bob Carey Pedestrian. Changing colors on you now. First National Bank Tower right downtown. Uh oh, oh, look at that. Oh, yes. Looks like they knew we were coming to them. Bearing no expense. We got baseballs, balls flying, we got airplanes. We got ourselves a College World Series that appears as if it's heading to a game three. Vanderbilt and Michigan, two programs mirroring each other. One is in its adolescence, if not its maturity. The other one is just beginning its grade school. And boy, have they come quickly. Walker Cleveland now on the mound for Michigan. Sixth pitcher used by Eric Backage, getting a freshman. The experience to pitch here in Omaha. J.J. Glade. Oh, what a way to start. Yep. This guy's going to be a major leaguer, maybe next year. <laughs> I'm a freshman. This is like the first time you come into a big league spring training game. You go, oh, <laughs> I face that guy. I face Kevin Ori. First pitch, I hit him right in the middle of the bat. <laughs> Fastball in. There's no way I'm going to leave it, over, leave it over the plate. I didn't leave it over the plate. He stared at me like, what are you doing? Dude, I got no idea. Sorry. <laughs> Good day. That's going to have some tough spin on it, but it's fielded cleanly. And there is one man down. Not an easy play for Jack Blumgren. It's a shortstop. Now he's seeing who's coming up, but he's going to move a little bit more towards second base, but he's not going to go back to his shortstop regular position. Quiet night for Blade, 0 for 4 with an intentional walk. So you hit Ori with your uh, first batter you see in spring training. Like, do you have nightmares at all about a particular hitter? Uh, does, does the baseball demons ever rear their heads? Or are you you having nightmares about other things now? <laughs> got, a lot, got a lot going on upstairs. Yeah. There's a <laughs> lot of issues. Um, who got me? Maglio. Chris Singleton almost took my head off. It's the first hit I gave him. Then Maglio really? hit it in like the 88th row at County Stadium, and it's that moment where you're like, what am I doing? <laughs> Which is not a great third pitchers, guy I faced. Pitchers always remember. Maglio or Doan just did that to a lot of guys, though. I mean, you're on a good list. Oh. So you gave up the first hit to our Sunday night did. radio analyst Chris Single right Back up the middle. I'm sure it's a highlight of his career. Yeah, he talks Something about that it. I'm sure he never forgets. Every he Sunday, how you brings that up. Yeah. Most likely should be texting me any second. Yeah, that well, makes sense. Hey! Three and one. I think, uh, I think Prince Andrew is going to go to the Saturday game Red Sox Yankees. Oh, yeah? 
Good insider info here. Well, I know that our buddy Boog Shambi is going to be over there doing the radio. He believes they should take a picture together. As they should. You should go sit in the royal box. You should be over there, right? Yeah, just walk. Just, just ask. I'm, yeah, they can't be any security around. They just roll in. I hung out with Eduardo and Kyle earlier this week. Can I get in? Can I get in here? I am right on. I was talking about the Bob Carey pedestrian bridge this <laughs> week, and I'm going <laughs> to sit in the royal box. <laughs> Who else was doing that? Makes sense. Taiwan, it's just gorgeous. You get on that thing. You keep walking. At some point, you're going to end up in Iowa. Maybe Mookie Betts will help you get connected there. Uh, Reports that he is a distant cousin wait, of what? Yes. Who, who are these reports? Watch. I'm telling you guys, keep reading. I read up. You have to believe everything that's on the social, right? <laughs> Good point. It is. It is painfully accurate. Center field. Paul fires his bat down. He knows that is a graveyard out there. Wait a minute. Come on. Wait a minute. <laughs> what are we doing? How does this figure into the game? <laughs> Love the glasses. Wow. Give me another ball. <laughs> I bet it barehanded when it comes back. <laughs> no. Yeah. That was always a fun move. <laughs> what else you want to show? Hey, why don't we show the one where Soriano hits it over the monster in the Futures game? Oh, Never seen good. that one before. Do we have that one? I, Kevin, do we have that a one? Lot of, <laughs> I gave a lot of them up. <laughs> Wind was blowing out. Furnace had the SEC all-time hit lead. So. Right. How would you describe your demeanor on the mound after you, you gave up one of those? Like, were you able to control your emotions or? No. Did you talk to the baseball at all? No, I, yeah, I talked call to it, myself. I talked to call Paul. It any, call it any names or anything? I, I, he's speechless. I didn't learn the ability to put the glove over your mouth until a little bit later on. And I should have probably learned it earlier. But now as a dad to children of your own, you're, you're teaching the lessons you I never am. learned. No, I am. You're right. Valuable. Three. KP, you're taking us to break here. What do we got? Bottom I don't know. Show me another home run I gave up. Michigan needs four of them to take the lead. Last chance for the Wolverines of the night. for Vanderbilt and no real power from Michigan. Kumar Rocker, who you saw earlier, sets a college World Series Vanderbilt record with 11 strikeouts. They had four hits, 28 in their previous two games. He silenced the Wolverines tonight. And he is certainly enjoying all this. Kumar Rocker, the freshman, and he brought up the point that at some point he might just become a one-man guy. All right, so Eddie has brought it to our attention now. I, I don't know what publication this is, but Mookie, you guys. Mookie Betts is reportedly a distant relative of soon-to-be Duchess Meghan Markle. We could reach out to Mookie and find that answer out. That is not a problem. If you want to get to that box, Mookie is your best bet. Get it? Best. I still think you should just walk down there. I'm just going to tell him I was talking about the Bob Carey Ped Bridge, and we would be in like Flint. <laughs> Bottom nine, Michigan needs three to tie against Tyler Brown. First pitch poured in there at 90 fastball. And if Vanderbilt's a winner tonight, we'll see you everybody for a game three, winner take all College World Series game tomorrow night. The equivalent of game seven. You get game three in college baseball. Longgren spinning, Donnie mm -hmm. stop. And the out is made. Boy, he has come up with huge plays, a web gem for Harrison Ray. We've seen it all College World Series, guys. He's come in on baseballs. He's gone to his right, and this time goes to his left. 
gets up quickly. And Infante with the stretch at first base, and guess who's on top? Loving it. K-Rock. Brown, who may very well figure in the game tomorrow night, has thrown 30 pitches. He's thrown upwards of three innings at a times this year. And he is certainly the guy that has the ability to pitch back-to-back -back nights. Tommy Henry last night for Michigan, Kumal Rocker tonight for Vanderbilt. So much start. influence on the outcome of a game, those starting pitchers, and there's just not that many sports in which you generally don't come back the next day and perform. But a starting pitcher oh. is clearly that position for a million different reasons. So Henry and Rocker have both done their jobs for their respective teams and their schools. They'll be going nuts in Nashville tomorrow night, and certainly in Ann Arbor, and all the alumni across the country and the world seeing if their team can win a championship one out away Vanderbilt from forcing a game three yep it's happening To left field, there is Scott. He's charging towards the line. He won't get there. Foul ball. Get there, boy. Hey, come on, boy. There are six umpires tonight. You got one down the left field line, one down the right field line. Greg Charles was right there to make the call. Great effort right here. You get the wall coming at you. Only way to put on the brakes quickly is to slide. Pretty good formula, Kumal Rocker, Tyler Brown. Ready to leap over that railing and celebrate a win. Not oh. yet, two and two. World Series champion. Rocker Brown, home runs defense. And we get ourselves a winner take all game. Cool moment right there. Drake Fellows, who pitched last night, was the first one to hug Kumar Rocker after that one. This kind of feels right, doesn't it? I'm sure. Vanderbilt goes undefeated to the finals. Michigan goes undefeated to the finals. You felt like this one was going to go free, and tomorrow night should be a blast. 
Bottom half of the order again was the key for Vanderbilt. Good balance from Clark all the way down to Duvall. Offensively, they did what they had to do, but the pitching, closing it out. This is a good one, fellas. Now, it's a great uh, reminder of how momentum is your next day's starting pitcher. And in this case, it was Rocker.